ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Now remember, boys, this time I want no live passengers left aboard. Understand? Shoot to kill. We don't have to do that, dude. Passengers don't cause trouble. Maybe not. This time we shoot them. Understand, Hank? Yeah. All right, you and Bart, stop the stage. We're all hiding now. I'll cover you from here. Get moving. Let's get him off of here. to the sheriff at Running Creek. Freedom, Rawhide. Wanted for murder and armed robbery. The masked bandit, known as the dude. $5,000 reward, dead or alive. 5000 Chicken feed. They ought to rape me. Chicken feed? That's $5,000 more than we got. He's right, dude. This job is supposed to get us a lot of loot. Why, this stage hasn't even a strong box. All we get is a lot of handbills. That's my sentiments, too. If you gentlemen are dissatisfied with my leadership, take a look at this. It's a ticket for $100,000. $100,000? What's the deal, dude? This is a letter from the president of the Overland Express Company introducing Vice President Sam Martin, our late friend here, to the Running Creek office. I don't see where that's going to get us any more money. You wouldn't, Bart, so suppose you keep your ears open and your mouth shut for a while. That's telling him off, dude. This letter says that Martin's to pick up 100000 in gold at the Running Creek office and take it east. All the agents along the way are to give Martin any help he needs. But that's Vice President Martin. Yeah, and he's dead. Why do you boys suppose I had you hold up the stage and shoot all the passengers? I want to present you with a new vice president, Sam Martin. Dude, you're a genius. You had everything all figured out. Yeah, but wait a minute. Suppose the agent at Running Crick knows the real Sam Martin. Well, suppose he does. I say 100,000 gold is worth a few bullets. Let's go. What about our horses? We don't need them. From now on, we're riding first class. Up on the boot, Bart. Overland stage, Tom. Huh? No stage due to pass here today. Hell, it must be a special one. Hey, dude, look. A masked man. Yeah. So we beat a couple of crooks out of a day's work. Nothing left for him around here except a couple of dead men back there on the road. Dead men. Gives me an idea. Yeah, what's that? Still got those handbills? Sure, right here. Good, hold on to them. We're going to deliver those after all. Now on that mass man's the dude. Whose horses? Maybe somebody in trouble. You might be right. Come on. dead. He doesn't have much of a chance either. Uh, what him mumble? Seems the stage was held up by the dude. Oh, me remember him bad killer. You're right, Tonto. We'll do what we can for this fellow. Then I'll see what I can do about the dude. He and his men must have been in that stage we saw. Help me make him comfortable. Treat them horses that away, pulling them up like that? Now, you know it ain't decent to treat a horse like that. Why, a horse... Listen to the way I tell him, my good man. Where's the agent in charge? 
Uh, Mr. Judkins. Here he is. Yes? Well, I'm Mr. Judkins, at long last. My papers. Mr. Martin, welcome to Running Creek. This is a red letter event to us. It isn't every day we fellows in field meet a real live vice president. Judkins, we in St. Louis appreciate the good job you're doing. Unfortunately, the press of business doesn't allow us to get out here very often. I can well understand that, Mr. Martin. Now, the uh, gold. Uh, you have the shipment here, haven't you? Right inside. We've taken every precaution. The sheriff has practically lived on top of that gold ever since they brought it in. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Judkin. Now, uh, let's see that gold and your sheriff. Right this way, sir. It's okay, sheriff. Vice President Martin, meet our sheriff, Buck McCall. This is indeed a pleasure, sheriff. Howdy, Mr. Martin. Howdy, gents. Hi. I'm sure glad to see you. Guarding $100,000 in gold is quite a responsibility. You've done a mighty fine job, Sheriff, but we'll take over now. Is the gold in there? Yep, I figured that would be the safest place. It's a smart idea. Let's have a closer look at it. All right. There it is. $100,000 in gold. Hey, you, Mr. Martin. Don't count on using them same horses again. They're all stove up. Why you ought to be ashamed of yourself allowing your men to whip beautiful horses like they are? Horseface. You're talking to Vice President Martin. Well, I don't care who he is. Any galoot that treats horses like that, well, he ain't no good. He's just not human, that's all. Uh. You'll have to excuse Horseface, Mr. Martin. He's so fond of horses, he's beginning to act like one. That's all right, Judkins. I had him pegged as an eccentric the minute I saw him. Oh, by the way, Sheriff, we were waylaid by a gang of road agents a couple of miles outside of town. Waylaid? Yes. We shot a couple of the men and got away. Had a pretty good look at the leader. He wore a mask and rode a big white stallion. Uh, Hank, show the Sheriff those handbills. Sounds to me like the masked man's the same bandit that's on these bills, Mr. Martin. I'll watch out for him. You be careful, Sheriff. From what I know of the duty, he's dangerous. Well, so am I. Just wait till I run across him. All right, boys, let's get to work. Well, Tyler, we've done all we can. I'm going to see if I can find a doctor. You stay here with him. What a horse! Oh. What a magnificent animal! The finest looking piece of horse flesh I've ever seen. And you can take it from Horse Face Jackson, who knows his horses. Why, you're wearing a mask. I'll explain the mask later, Mr. Jackson. When did the stage arrive? Oh, about an hour ago. An hombre by the name of Sam Martin was aboard. Vice president of the company. I see. Uh, by the way, is the sheriff in? Reach. I'll be back later, Mr. Jackson. Glad to see you, Sheriff. I'll bet you are. I came here to report one murder and possibly two. A gang of outlaws held up that stage outside of town. Outlaws? <laughs> Get inside. Certainly. I'm thinking you're wrong, Sheriff. You can always tell a good man by the way he treats his horse. The masked outlaw. What'd you do, just walk right in, Sheriff? Sure did, on that white horse you described. Fits the description of the dude to a T. So he's the man, all right. Sheriff, I wouldn't ride in here if I were an outlaw. If this man and those outside arrived on that stage, they're the ones I'm after. Now listen to that. If he weren't a murderer, I could fight it in my heart to admire such colossal nerve. Sheriff, do your duty. Wait a minute, Sheriff. Now you better lock him up, Sheriff. You're right. Now to have a look at that face. Mr. Martin, the stage is all loaded and ready, sir. Oh, thank you. Don't you want to see this guy's face? No, save the unmasking for later. I've got a schedule to keep. All right. Come on, you. Inside. You'll get new horses at Twin Forks train station. That's five hours drive ahead. Present journey east, Mr. Martin. Safe trip, sir. Goodbye, Goodbye gentlemen. I shall never forget your kind cooperation. Oh, don't forget to keep an eye on the dude. Oh, don't worry. Goodbye, Mr. Martin. Goodbye, Mr. Martin. Goodbye, Gold. What do you mean by that horse face? Just what I said, Buck. That hombre or anyone else that treats horses the way he does, well, they ain't no good. I wouldn't trust him with a pine nut 
let alone a hundred thousand dollars. That isn't any way to talk about Mr. Martin. He's a vice president of our company. <laughs> oh, a ten dollar horse and a forty dollar saddle on a Texas range. I was rustling cattle, singing a hi hi yippee all the day. <laughs> Old horse face didn't mean that you was a ten dollar horse. That was just a song. Well, uh, hello, Injun. That's a nice pony you got there. Uh, who are you looking for? One man who ride white horse. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't he a dandy, huh? You know, I was thinking if I could save enough money, I'd like to buy me a horse like this. Because you can always tell the character of a man by the horse he rides. And he is a lovely horse, ain't it? Me think so, too. Where rider? Well, why do you want to know? Him, my friend. Oh. Well, if he's your friend, you better start thinking fast, because that fool of a sheriff's got him locked up in jail. In jail? Yeah. How me see him? Well, if I were you, I wouldn't reckon as how I know the masked man, because you'll have to find yourself in jail, too. A man who like horses talk good medicine. Yes, you bet your life. I only wish the sheriff did. Say, you know, there's a window in the back of the jail. Good. Kimasame. I was hoping you'd come, Tano. How's the driver? Him die. I'm sorry to hear that. His murders just drove off with $100,000 in gold. I've got to get out of here somehow. Uh, what do you want me to do? I think we can trust Mr. Jackson. He's a short fellow with a long mustache. Old man who like horses? Yes. Have you seen him? Yes. Him good man. Him show Tonto window. Bring him back here. I want to talk to him. Me do. Well, here goes Tonto. Good luck, Mr. Horseface. Thanks. I'm a rip snorting galley wampus, and this is my day to howl. <laughs> Cut that out. What's gotten into you? Why allowing those hombres to get away with that load of gold? Why, any pinhead would know they're no good. Why, you little fella? I'm shot putting up. that honest fella in the jail there when he came here for help. Now, I don't understand these things at all. Okay, so if you I... like him so well, I'll I put you in there with him for a while to kill you. I'll let you out just as soon as you quiet down. All right, Sheriff. Reach. Horseface, get his keys. Unlock the cell. Inside. You can't get away with this. I'm sorry, Sheriff. But I have to overtake your friend Martin and question him. Horse is ready, Kimasabi. Good. Mr. Jackson, give us a half hour head start, then turn the sheriff loose. Uh, just as you say, friend. I'll get you for this if it takes me the rest of my life. You'll have your chance in a half hour, Sheriff. Be sure and bring a posse with you. Don't worry. Come on, Tonto. Give the man a hand, boys. We're in a hurry. Sure thing, Mr. Martin. Find fresh horse in the back, boys. Thanks. You don't seem to recognize any of you. The new men? They're uh, special drivers, mister. My credentials will explain. Uh-huh. Suppose you come in and we'll check them over. And you can sign the clearance papers. That's fine. Not that I want to cause you any trouble. It's just that I don't know any of you. Well, that's perfectly all right. I'm glad to see you're so careful. Oh, well, here are my papers. <clears throat> this says uh, Sam Martin, that you? That's right, vice president of the company. Vice president? You ain't Sam Martin. I rode shotgun with Sam Martin 15 years ago when he first started out. Doesn't pay to know Sam Martin, does it, Rawhide? No, it sure don't. What happened? He knew Sam Martin. Oh. You got those horses ready yet? Not yet. We just were... Well, get out of here and get to work. Take that agent with you. We haven't got all day. Don't worry, dude. With a share of that gold, we won't take all day. Rawhide, how do you feel about sharing that gold? Well, I think we'll split it up four ways. A quarter of a hundred thousand dollars. That's not bad. Not bad at all. What for a half a hundred thousand? You mean Barton, Hank's part? Yeah. Oh. Sure, why not? 
I never did care about splitting up pots. Too many ways. Neither did I, Rawhart. You know, the border is right close by. Two saddle horses and two pack horses loaded with that gold out there. We'd be out of the law's reach in half a day. For good. Yeah. What do you say? I think I'll go split up that pot for us, dude. Now. Think you need any help? Nope. I can take care of things. Go ahead. I'll pack some food. Hold it, boys. What do you mean, Rohide? Dude changed his mind. We're leaving the stage here. Saddle him up. We're riding. Well, what about the gold? We can't carry all that gold in saddlebags. Well, can't own pack horses, stupid. Well, we can't travel fast that way. We don't have to. We're heading for the border. Now slap them saddles on them nags and make it fast. All right, Rohan. Gunfire, Kimasepi. The chain station is just around the bend. Those shots mean the outlaws are there and there's trouble. We ride in? No, Tonto. Riding in would be a perfect target. We'll leave Silver and Scout here and go ahead on foot. You circle around to the rear. But many of them, only two of us. That's right, Tonto. What we lack in numbers, we gain by surprise. It's our only chance. We understand. Let's go. you get here? Who let you out of jail? I never stay behind bars long. All right. What do you want, a split? Oh, I'm taking you into Running Creek to stand trial for murder. Oh, that's a daydream, mister. My men are outside. You haven't a chance. Trick, dude, but it didn't work. All right, mister. Reach. And don't get any smart ideas. Thanks, Rawhide. You see, mister, I told you. You didn't have a chance. And you won't need this gun any longer. I just found an engine snooping around the barn out there. Must have been a pal of his. Where's he now? Don't worry about him, dude. He's all taken care of. He won't be moving for a long time. Oh, good. Now, mister, move. Bogum, take my engine. Get those no good. Let me shoot this guy, dude, so we can get it over with. Don't be impatient, Rawhide. I want to see what's under that mask. Before you do that, dude, you'd better make plans to get out of here. There's a posse on its way here now. Fairy tales, mister. The dumb sheriff at Running Creek thinks I'm legitimate. Yes, but he doesn't think I am. He's after me right now. You know, I broke out of his jail. He might be telling the truth, dude. You better let me shoot him so we can get going. We will, we will. First, I want to have a look at his face. Got here just in time, Tonto. Me almost not get here at all. Him give me trouble in barn. Rest of gang there. One dead, other bad wounded. Oh, the sheriff and his posse. Them still after you. What we do? 
We stay here, Tonto. If I can't convince the sheriff who the dude is, perhaps the wounded man will talk. All right, masked man, hoist him. You too, engine. Mr. Martin. That is Mr. Martin, gentlemen. Him, the real dude. You still trying to make that story stick? This time I can for sure, Sheriff. Yeah? A wounded man in barn. Maybe him talk. All right, we'll see about that. And that's the whole story, Sheriff. I see. Well, stranger, Bart's confession's told all. I sure owe you an apology. And a hundred thousand thanks for that gold you saved. You got it, Sheriff. You got the dude and the rest of his gang. You won't have any more trouble. Jim, take those two cutthroats outside. Yeah, and watch them close. Any thief that treat horses like them two hombres deserve to be hung for that alone. Say, there's a $5,000 reward for the capture of the dude. It all belongs to you two. Give it to Mr. Jackson. Old horse face here? Him, Mr. Horace F. Jackson. Good horseman. It's for that new horse you've always wanted, Mr. Jackson. Oh, well, no, I... <laughs> but do you, do you mean it? Of course. You see that he gets it. Well, it's all right by me, if that's the way you feel about it. You'll pardon us. We have work to do. Come, Tonto. Take care of that horse. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't stay long in one place, does he? I'll say he doesn't. Sure a fine fellow, mask and all. I wonder who he is. <laughs> He's the fellow that folks all talk about. Who's that? None other than the Lone Ranger. with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. And I know there's gold in here. <laughs> I know it's in here because I can smell it. You know you get like I am. Yes, sir, you, you can smell gold from a mile away. Uh, hey, come on, get going. Don't know what Look in the wrong direction, Hovey. They're over there. Oh, come on. Yep, yep. Hey, Dick, Dick. Yep. Come yep. here, boy. Come here. Look. Oh, yeah. We struck it, boy. We struck it. Look at that. It's pay dirt. Pay dirt. Yeah. <laughs> gold. 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 Yeah. Look at it, boy. Just look at it. We struck a banana, this boy. We <laughs> struck it this time. You said it would be here. Oh, I know it was here. Yeah, but it's bigger than I thought it was. This ain't just an ordinary gold strike. No, this is an important one. That's why I want you to keep it under your hat, boy. Don't you lay your tongue to it. Don't tell every soul. Not until you get to the Landovers and register it. Yeah. Don't worry, I won't. You want anything special from town? Oh, no, no. It'll, it'll, it'll wait. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get me a brand new set of store teeth made out of this gold, too. <laughs> Say, oh, yeah, you, you better stop and see your paw. Yeah, because you know he'll be pining for you. That works both ways. Yeah. But, hey, oh, wait a minute. Don't go, don't, don't go. I wanted to give you the bearings of the location. I don't need it. I've got it in my head. Oh, that's good. You keep it there, boy. Keep it there. Oh, Joe. Oh, boy. Come on. Ah. Yeah. Oh, Joe. Ah. There he is. Looks like a man riding with something on his mind. Yeah. I'll wait for him here. Get over to bushes and cover me. What's up? You're Dick McHenry. That's right. Thought I heard some blasting. So did I. Somebody working a mine around here? That's a fair guess. You and Ed Dudley. That's a good guess. Saddlebag sure loaded. Mister, you're blocking the trail. I said you were blocking the trail. I'll give you just 10 seconds to light out of here. Now put the artillery away, kid, and let's take a look in those bags. Say I know you. 
You're Zack Carter, the gambler. You hang around with another tin horn named Hovey. Now I'll give you just three seconds to get out of here. One, two. Shots come from there. That means trouble, Tonto. Let's have a look. It isn't possible. My guys, look at this stuff, Zack. Look. This is real fancy. I had a hunch you had your eyes on something like this. We've got to find that mine. We've got to file a claim on it. Yeah. Why didn't you shoot him in the arm? You didn't have to close his mouth. He wasn't going to shoot you in the arm. He'd have plugged you dead center. Yeah, but you had time to aim. He didn't. We could have made him give us the location of that mine. Yeah, nothing in his pockets. Now we got the job of finding it. Maybe he's still alive enough to talk. Hey. Hey. Hey, McHenry. Oh, kid. You're wasting your time. He's through. Not the only thing we can do now is back trail him. Go to the mine? Say, that's a smart idea. Do you know how to trail? No. I thought maybe you did. I'm a card player like you. Where would I learn any Indian tricks? Well, let's go back to town. I'll think of something. Down there. Him still alive, Kimasabi. Why, you low down bushwhacking buzzards. Get away from that boy. I thought I'd find something like this when I heard them shots. You murdering coyotes. We heard the shots too, mister. Oh, sure. You look innocent enough. I saw that the minute till I come in. Hey, Injun, tell your pal Larry he forgot to take off his mask. Never mind the mask. This boy has one chance in a thousand to live, and while we stand here wasting time talking, he's losing that chance. Tonto, the water. I told you now, stay away from that boy. Put down that carbine and lend a hand. Hey, you got away with you. Who are you, anyhow? What makes you think I ought to trust you? Did you ever see a silver bullet like this before? What? The Lone Ranger. Well, you've proved to me that you didn't kill him. But, but who did? Give me subby, see what me find. Where? Uh, horse stand there a little time, then cards fall. Somebody must have been waiting for him. Him stand there, face this way. I see. Why, these cards are marked. Yeah, a fine one he was. Carries more cards around and then shoots a man in the back. There must have been two of them. The one with the cards was facing the boy. There had to be another one to shoot him in the back. I think we'll find a cheap pair of gamblers mixed up in this. I think what we ought to do is look for them two saddlebags, because they're a loaded plum full of high-grade ore. Yeah, and that's why they killed him. He hasn't been killed yet, but he's mighty close to it. Does that give you the shakes? <laughs> Where does it come from? Wofford, you'll never be a rich man. What difference does it make where it comes from? You should say, how can I get it? My chance will come. When? You're not getting any younger. You've been in this hole so long, Wofford, you're going to die in it. There's big cities, like New York, London, and Paris. Do you think you'll ever get to see those big cities, Wofford? You're feeling pretty chipper. I bet the fellow you got this one don't feel so good. Do you think we stole this, Wofford? How else would you get it? You bring it in here and file a claim on it and make me feel like a fool. Is it my fault I haven't got two bits? I don't get any chances. But is that my fault? There's two things wrong with what you said. First, we can't file a claim on this because we don't know where it is. Second, you do get chances. And we're going to give you one right now. Do you know how everybody thinks that uh, Ed Dudley and young McHenry knows there's gold in the hills? Yeah, that old desert rat. That's just a lie to get himself a grub stake. Uh-uh. No lie. This is it. How's that again the way you say I should talk? How do I get it? <laughs> he sure learns fast. How do I get it? Like this. You get one third in this manner and a wit. If Ed Dudley or old man McHenry comes here to file a claim in the unfriendly mountains, you don't file a claim. You give us the location. Oh, you can't do this without some killing. Does that bother you? Sure. There has to be a killing, Wofford. Now wake up. 
Now that you know all about this, you better line up with us or you'll be the first man to die. I got another ace up my sleeve. I think I know how to make old man McHenry lead us right smack into that mine. You don't know him. I mean, you're new around here. You never saw him get mad. I want him to get mad. That's what I'm counting on. I want him to get so mad that he'll strap on his guns and go looking for Ed Dudley. We can't stay here. You don't even have decent shelter. The uh, sky was always good enough roof for me. Not for a wounded boy, Ed. Tonto, I want you to ride to his father's ranch. Tell Mr. McHenry the whole story. Then bring back a wagon and some mattresses. We've got to take this boy home. That's right, Kimisa. You know, old Tom is sure going to bust a sense when he hears about this. I don't believe there's anything in the world that old Tom cared more for than this young man. I'm going to ride to town and see if I can match those cars to the man who dropped them. You keep your eyes open for trouble. Well, do you reckon them tin horns will keep trying? Yes, sir. They're bound to now that they've seen what came out of this mine. Yeah, oh, wait just a minute. There's one thing I didn't tell you. See, Dick here was on his way to the office to file the claim. And it's not yet protected. Why, shucks, no. Why, anybody could grab it that would jump us. It may be already grabbed. I'll stop at the land office and register it for you. Yeah, well, here. Here, I'll give you the baron. Say they are. All right, Ed. Take care of the boy. I'll take care of him. What do you want? Heard a rumor. Thought it would be a friendly act to ride over and let you hear it, too. There's just two things I don't have any truck with. Rumors and tin horns. Or get... <laughs> Rumor says your boy and Ed Dudley struck it rich. Do tell. Rumor goes on to say that Ed Dudley shot your boy in the back. Pull it out, you crazy fool. You got part of my skin. Well, you come here telling me Ed Dudley shot my boy. You lying, sneaking, tin horn bark. <laughs> Don't you pull any iron on me, you critter. You poison critter. What'd you aim to do with a story like that? Well, I... I didn't say it was true. I... I said I heard it. You heard what? Where? Who said it? Well, turn me loose and I'll tell you. When I get good and ready. And you answer me when I talk to you. Well, uh, They were talking about it in town. And a saddle bump came in and he came into the saloon and, and... And he was talking about it. Yeah, yeah. He, he said he saw it. Go back and tell him he's a liar. Go back and tell him the next time he talks against Ed Dudley, I'll ram the lie down his throat on the end of a 45. Now pull yourself out. <coughs> now get off of my land and stay off. That'll be hard to do, remembering this. How, Injun? How? Uh, you're on the McHenry Ranch. What's your name? Me, Tonto. Tonto, huh? Well, you want something? You hungry? No time to eat. Me bring bad news. You too? Your son, Dick, him get shot. Go on. Him find gold. Ride to file claim. Somebody shoot him in back. Mm-hmm. Just who do you think did the shooting? I may not know for sure, but not Ed Dudley. Him say, go bring wagon with mattress. Take boy home. You telling me the truth, Indian? Somebody shot my boy? How bad's he hurt? Plenty bad. All right. Run over to the bunkhouse and tell the boys to give you a couple of mattresses. I'll get the wagon ready. We'll go after him. Go on. Hurry up. Well, did he fall for it? Why, that crazy old vinegaroon. I'll cash him in if it's the last thing I ever do. Did he fall for it? Well, he didn't seem to, but let him think it over. First, he'll begin to get curious. Then he'll wander. Then he'll travel up that mine to have a look around. And we'll follow him like a gentle little breeze. A gentle little breeze? 
Just remember this. He's my meat, that McHenry. When the showdown comes, he's my meat. Well, let's wait around a while. You come by. Here he comes now. It worked. Ed, I'll tag along after you. You go into town and hang around that land office. What for? Wofford can take care of that angle. Wofford's a worm. If anything goes wrong, he scares too easily. Now go on to town. On Friendly Mountains. But it's here. Just about here. What do you want? There's no money here. Only records. I want to file a claim. Claim? Well, what's the idea of the mask? Never mind the mask. I have good reasons for wearing it. Well, maybe, but this is kind of a regular. I, I don't know whether I should. Nothing in the law says you can't register a claim for a man on a mask. Go ahead. Names Edward Dudley and Richard McHenry. That... What's the matter? Oh, nothing there. Give me the location first. From a point northeast of Split Rock in the Unfriendly Mountains. Unf oh, excuse me, I'll get another pen. You seem nervous, Mr. No, I, I just had a hard day. You know, run the land office isn't easy. Uh, did Dudley McHenry strike it rich? I'm just registering a claim for them. <laughs> okay, uh, Unfriendly Mountains. South. 500 yards from a mound of stones. North, 200 feet from Lantern Rock. Oh, excuse me. Oh, wait. No, you have business I don't want any part of. Hovey, wait. Get him out, mister. Reach. Reach high. What's going on here? Where's Carter? Following McHenry and a stray Indian up to the mine? Who's this? I don't know, but he just filed that claim. Dudley's claim? Yep, I got the whole location right down in the book. Get his guns. What are you two up to? Well, now look who's asking questions. What are you up to? And how did you get into this? You'll find out. Yeah. Wofford, cut the page off that book. I'll take care of the claim and him too. Tear it out, eh? Not a bad idea. Keep your hands off. Remember what you and Carter said? How do I get it? Well, I learned fast. Carter. Carter will get... Now, get him first. And you, mister. I'm taking you in for killing this man. <laughs> Eyes. How's he been? Oh, I wouldn't worry too much about him, Tom. I've seen a lot of weaker men come up from worse. Well, let's get him in the wagon on the mattresses. It's going to be an awful bumpy ride. Yeah, that's a mighty poor excuse for a road up there. First, me feed horse. Him eat plenty. Then him walk slow, not hurry home to stable. It's a good idea, Injun. You're all right. Ed. Uh. You know a gambler by the name of Carter? Oh, yeah, I heard of him. He's about as crooked as he come, too. I'm going into town and find him. I think he's the Jasper who did this. No, you're going to come back to the ranch. At least right till we find out how the boys are taking it. No. I'm going to kill me a gambler named Carter. Hit! I'm hit! Help me drag the boy into the mine! Come on out of there! Go out your guns and come on out! Henry! 
know who this is? You're a bushwhacker. That's all I need to know. This is Carter McHenry. Zack Carter. By the time I'm through with you gentlemen, you're going to be sorry you ever saw a gold mine or a bow and arrow. Bullet no can go around corner. Better save till later. <laughs> he got his strap, Tom. How are you that leg? Oh, not very good, Ed. <coughs> you got any ideas, Indian? I'm ready to shoot fast if we come out. I'm not able to get everybody. Maybe one man live, no more. Hunter not like to die like this. <coughs> All right, Chance, it's up to you. You can stay in there and smother like rats. I can take two or three steps, enough to draw this fire and give you boys a chance. Get the wagon out of the way, engine. <laughs> Why, you crazy you can lose you in the last two seconds out there. Get the wagon out of the it's way, engine. move. What's the matter with it? I don't know. Maybe it's stuck. Come on. Come just in time, Kimisami. I'll fix up the wagon, then we'll take them to the ranch. Uh -huh. <coughs> Me, I'm all smoked up inside like the side of bacon. Say, a few more minutes back yonder and we'd all been done for. It was mighty close, Ed. And you quit grumbling about being cheated out of that other gambling critter. We've had enough smoking gunplay around here for today. I'm going to see Walford in the jail. I'd like you to keep your temper and see that he gets a fair trial. I'm not bothering about Walford. Only thing I care about is this boy. Of course. I'll send the sheriff to take this one in. Yeah, don't you worry about the boy either. I'll see that he's kept in a quiet place. Hey, look, he's coming too. He's opening his eyes. Hello, Dad. I thought I heard some shooting. There was the sheriff. It's all over now. I opened my eyes once. I thought I saw a man in a mask. Hey, you did, boy. Yeah, he saved our gold mine, and he saved a whole parcel of lives, too. Ed, look. Uh, hey, hey, come back here. Who is he? Who him? Why, he's the Lone Ranger. Hello, Silver Hoy! The Lone Ranger. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. The shots I heard came from somewhere around here, Toto. Look, Kimasabi, blood. Mm. Hello. Listen. There, man calling. He's injured. Don't be afraid. We're friends. Thanks. I'm Jason, express agent. It's no use. They got me good. Did you see who did this? Three outlaws, Luce Laid, Sam Kirk, and Ruth Watson. Them after money? Gold shipment. 
on way to express office. Did they get the gold, Jason? No. I held them off while the driver and wagon got away. I've seen Watson before. Can you describe the other two? One, a big man with... Uh, uh, Too late, Kimasabi. Him gone now. Poor fellow, he didn't have a chance. One man against three. We go after them? Yes, Tano. Man riding fast. Maybe that one of them. It's Watson, Tano. He's seen us. Come on. chasing me for. I didn't get any of that hold-up money. I know you didn't. Neither did Slater Kirk. The three of you killed a man, and the law wants you for that. You mean that express messenger died? Somebody aimed too good. Bullet hit heart. An innocent man gave his life to break up that robbery. I'm going to bring the three of you in if it's the last thing I do. Where did you leave your accomplices? Back at the crossroads. We figured it would be better for the three of us to split up. You're meeting them again someplace. Where? I don't know. Tano, it seems that this fellow wants to take the full blame. Who turned him over to the sheriff? Hey, wait a minute. I'll tell you the truth. We was going to meet in Clarksville. We figured nobody would know us there. How long ago did you split up? Oh, three hours, maybe four. Now, that's the truth, mister. We was going to get some money there and head for the border. Get some money? You mean steal some, don't you? Tano will take this fellow back, then go after those other two. Me hear name of Clarksville before. Somebody famous lived there? Yes, Tonto. Somebody very famous. Billy Banyan, the town barber. Town barber? What barber do to be famous? Billy has a reputation of being the bravest barber in the state. And just as handy with guns as with scissors. If Kirk and Slade tangle with Billy, there'll be plenty of trouble. Now get going. Ah! Hey, what are you trying to do to me? I just aim to please. Now set back. If it's any comfort to you, I won't be cutting your throat after next week. What do you mean? You can buy my shop and have it just for the asking. Oh, Billy, you're joking. You can't quit barbering. Didn't you just say that a female woman shouldn't be cutting whiskers? You knowed I wasn't referring to you. Why are you quitting barbering? What are you going to do? Well, I got a hankering to be a lady for a change. A lady? You? <laughs> you think I can't? Oh. Nobody ever thinks on you as being a lady, Billy. A female, maybe, but a lady? <laughs> Never. Well, they'll just have to change their thinking because I'm leaving for St. Louis next week. It won't work, Billy. You're one of us. A rootin' tootin' two-gun gal that's born to the West. And you wouldn't be happy in no dude place like St. Louis. Besides, it takes big money to live like a lady. Well, what do you think I've been saving my money for all these years? I got big money right in my safe in there. You got a lot of other people's money in that safe, too. And if you leave, where are they going to keep it? Ain't no bank in this town. You're the only one that's fast enough on the trigger to guard it for us. Well, they'll just have to guard yourself. I'm going to be a lady, I tell you. Oh, that'll be 40 cents. All right, but take it easy. Can you change a $20 gold piece? I can change any chicken feed you got on you. Wait here. Where's the barber? Next room. Back in a minute. Hey, yo. Barber, get out here. I ain't got all day. If I was you, stranger, I wouldn't talk like that to our barber. Billy don't take it kindly. Well, you're not me. And I don't care whether he takes it kindly or not. Hey, you. I said to hurry it up. Hold your horses, mister. Here, Joe, here's your chain. Thanks, Billy. Seems like you're in an all-fired hurry to get your hair cut, mister. Eh, yeah, quit your blabbing, woman. And tell the barber to get out here and go to work. Well, the barber is out, and I'm going to work on you right now. Oh, lady barber, get away from me. No fool woman's going to cut my hair. I don't like the way you said that. Now, you get out of here and quick. Why don't you stick to your knitting and leave a man's job to a man? Because some women can do it better. 
Like what, for instance? Like tanning the hide of a nominee that's too sassy for his own good. Now get. I don't take orders from no hatchet fate female. This goes for you and your shop and your orders. Why, you ornery pole cat, you! Hey, get up! Quit, will you? That'll teach you who's the better man. Billy, look out! Oh, a sniveling sidewinder, huh? You're lucky I only skinned your arm. Next time, I won't be so easy on you. Pick up your pop gun. And get your carcass out of here. And don't come back. <laughs> St. Joe, you go out there and keep an eye on him and let me know he's got any friends in town. Sure thing, Billy. First time I ever saw you come sailing out feet first. That lady Barbara, she almost packed an awful wallop. Oh, it's you. When'd you get into town? This morning. Been nosing around. Anybody ask you any questions? Of course not. The trouble is with you, you can't help looking suspicious. Here. Wear this badge I stole. Come on, let's get out of here. I tell you, I'm worried. Why should Roof take any longer than us getting here? Better run into some trouble. Yeah, and blabbed about where he was meeting us. Roof wouldn't do a thing like that. I don't trust anyone. We got to get out of here. With what? We're dead broke. Yeah, if we'd only gotten away with that gold shipment. Ifs don't count. We got to get our hands on some money some other way. I suppose you got an idea. That's right. A good one. Why, there isn't even a bank in this hick town. Oh, yes, there is. You're crazy. Where? About 10 yards from where you were sitting before. Ah, uh, talk sense, will you? I told you I've been nosing around. This town thinks a lot of that lady, Barbara. They'll tell you anything you want to know about her. Uh, there's nothing I want to know about that old she-cat. Not even that she's got the whole town's money just waiting for us to take it. Her? Where? In a safe in a back room. Safe? That's right. And you, the best little safe opener in the whole territory? She can outdraw us both. There won't be any gunplay. Tell me, uh, don't you think my beard needs a little trimming? What do you mean by that? Plenty. Here's what we're gonna do. There you are, Hank. You look like a regular dude now. <laughs> Can't nobody give me a haircut as good as you, Billy. And that new hair tonic you use sure smells sweet. You know, I thought you'd like that. You know folks tell me that they can whip that clean across the street. <laughs> well, see you again next week, Billy. Hi, Joe. Hi. Billy, you was right. Now, take it easy, Joe. Right about what? About that no-good hombre that got fresh with you. Oh, you mean he's got friends? Yeah, fellow with a big, thick beard. I never seen him before. They was holding a mighty secret powwow. Find out what they was cooking up? Trouble. They're planning to rob you, Billy. Rob me? Yeah. Why, there ain't a man living that can do that. But there's two of them, Billy. Only two of them? Well, it ain't quite a fair fight. Did you find out what the plan is? I heard some of it. The big one, the fellow with a beard, he's coming in and asking you to trim his whiskers. Then while you're doing it, the other one sneaks in the back room and opens your safe. Oh, I see. When I go after one of them, the other one's going to get the drop on me from the reef. That's it, Billy. Don't you want me to stand by in case you need me? No, thanks, Joe. You go down and tell that sheriff to get that jail ready for a couple of crooks. Sure will. Oh, a bearded man's coming in here and asked me to do some cutting. Well, I'll do some cutting, but it won't be on his beard. Clarkville's just through those trees, Tano. We camp here? Oh, there's a better spot over there. Come on. Where do you think best place to look for Slade and Kirk? That's hard to say. They could be hiding in town or outside of it. The description we have of those two doesn't help much. They may be hard to recognize. Well, they've been on road many days, riding fast. No time shave or clean. Maybe them look plenty suspicious when them reach town. That's just what I was thinking, Tunnel. Where's the first place they'd head to change their looks? A barber shop. 
You want me to go there now? Ask Lady Barber if her see any suspicious characters? No, Tunnel. I've heard so much about this fabulous Billy Banyan, I'd like a look at her myself. I'll ride in with you. You go to Barber's shop and mask? Then a whole town maybe think you bandit. Don't worry, Tunnel. I'll wear a disguise. Let's see. I could go as a rugged old Indian scout. <laughs> with a long mustache and a full beard that needs a cutting. I reckon is how I could ask the Lady Barber for a trimming. Without her or anyone in town getting suspicious. But if Lady Barber plenty smart, her sure to see through your disguise. I realize that, Tunnel. But if I have to, I'll explain to Billy the real reason why I'm there. Me understand, Kimasabi. Me help make you look enough like Indian scouts so you fool even Tonto. <laughs> you got it straight now? Yeah, I got it straight. As soon as you go inside, I sneak around to the side and crawl through the window. That's right. Now keep as quiet as you can. But if she does hear, I'll have my gun on her before she can make a move. How do I look, Tano? Like old time scout, Kim Isabi. You fool whole town. I hope you're right. You look around town. See if you can pick up any trace of Slade and Kirk. Me meet you back here. Me hear Lady Barber plenty rugged. You not let her cut too much or her get suspicious. Don't worry, Tano. I'll just get a trim. Be careful. Now, let's go. Hey, wait a minute. Looks like somebody beat us to it. Reckon you could give me a little trim? My whiskers is spouting like weeds, ma'am, and uh, say, uh, up to about here? Why, sure, mister. Climb in. I'll fix you up good. Take your hat off. Never mind the hat. I'm a keeping it up. You're, uh... New in this town, ain't you? Yep, <laughs> that's right. Just got in. Uh, what's your trade? Oh, <laughs> might say I uh, was a hunter. Oh, a hunter, huh? Well, that's mighty interesting. When you uh, do your hunting, do you uh, usually wear a mask? A mask? <laughs> what do you mean, ma'am? Well, most people wouldn't notice it. But it's a barber's business to study faces. And yours is mighty tan, except in around the eyes. And that's the outline of a mask, mister, an outlaw's mask. Now, hold on, man. Don't move or I'll cut your gullet. I know all about your little scheme to rob me. Look, Mrs. Bannon, I'm no outlaw, and I didn't come here to rob you. Oh, so you even used a fake voice on me. I ought to do away with you right now. I'm not who you think I am, Mrs. Bannon. And I suppose you're not working with a friend. Yes, of course. And I suppose he's not due here in a little while like you told him to. She's coming here, but only to help... Oh, I... shut up. I've heard all I want out of you. And when your friend sneaks in that back room, I'm going to let you have it first and then him. And nothing you'll say will change my mind. Your friend's a little late, ain't he? I take it back. He's right on time. You in there. Come out with your hands up or I'll put a bullet through your friend's head. Stay where you are, Tuttle. Dead burn it. It's the first time I was ever tricked by a man and he got away with it. Kimasabi, what happened? It seems that Mrs. Banyan was expecting unwelcome visitors, Tano, and mistook us for them. Oh, so there's an engine mixed up in it, too. Where's that other no-good hombre that I threw out of here this morning? What she mean? Oh, don't play possum with me, you ornery polecats. I know why you're here, and you can kill me, and I won't tell you the combination to my safe. We don't want to rob your safe, Mrs. Banyan. All we want is some information. Well, that's a mighty pretty speech, mister. How can I believe you? You got any way of proving it? Yes, ma'am. Just one way. Here's your gun. Would I give it back to you if I expected to rob you? Well, I'll be darned. Now, will you tell us who you were expecting? Well, I don't know rightly, mister, but I had a warning that a bearded man and another army was coming here to hold me up. And maybe they're still planning to. And if they're the ones that Tano and I are after, I'd like to get a confession out of at least one of them. You think there's a way of doing that, mister? There's a way of trying to do it. Howdy, ma'am. 
Reckon you've got time to trim the whiskers of an old galoot who's been out prospecting for the past six months? Well, sure. Send him in. <laughs> well, I mean me, ma'am. Oh, say, you could use a trimming. Climb in, mister. Thank you. You not make noise. We know your plan. Scared or not? Head clear now. We can't let him get away. Go after him. Bring him back. And what about other one? I'll take care of him. I'll give him a few minutes to get settled in there. Maybe back fast. Nothing like making sure, Indian. You got a mighty fine bushel of wheat here, mister. Say, friend, you're mighty fidgety. I'm not used to sitting still for so long. Say, did you hear something in there? Well, no, lady, you're just imagining things. Oh, no, I'm not. I heard somebody trying to sneak in my back room. Stay where you are. Drop that gun. I got a cover, Lou. Get the weapon that's safe. Yeah. Well, don't be all day about it. Hey, who are you, anyway? I'm a man who takes what he wants, even if he has to kill to get it. Oh, you don't say. Then you must be one of them sneaking coyotes that held up the express wagon in Eastland and killed the agent. That's right, lady. I shot him. And you'll get some of the same medicine if you make one funny move. What's the matter, Lou? Can't you open it? Uh-uh. You must be slipping. Get in there, you. Get him, mister! Nice work, mister. Say, I'm sure glad you warned me about that mask of yours. You know, you look mighty different without that beard. <laughs> Say, you are that same hombre, ain't you? <laughs> Reckon you could give me a little trim? <laughs> oh, the duration. <laughs> Oh, me glad you all right. Me get other one. Him out cold. Good work, Tonto. And with that confession Kirk made, we have a clear case of murder against the two of them. Thanks to you, ma'am. Oh, it weren't nothing. I like to see army crooks put behind bars. Billy! Hey, oh. Billy! Excuse me. Certainly. Hey, Billy! Oh, stop your caterwauling. I've been telling folks you was planning to leave town, Billy, and they're holding a mass meeting to stop you. They say we just can't get along without you. Won't you change your mind? Well, after all the fun I've had today, I guess I'll have to. You know, like you said, Joe, I'm a two-gun gal. And if I go to St. Louis, why, I just naturally couldn't stand the quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Say, didn't I send you to see the sheriff? 
I just now located him, Billy. He's coming right over and catch them two killers when they try to hold you up. Well, you darned old fool, they've already been caught. What? You mean you've done it all by yourself? Oh, of course not. These two here... Why, they're gone. Who's gone? Why, that masked man and that engine. A masked man, you say? Why, I hear tell of him. They say he always shows up when killers need catching. And you know who he is? You're darned right, I know. There's only one person he could be. The Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver the Lone Ranger. Watch out! He's got a gun! No! Don't! Let me go! What is it, Henry? Which Cavendish, Warden? Somebody must have sneaked him a gun. I was just letting him out for exercise period when he pulled it on me. Which Cavendish? He's the last one I'd want to escape. Tell the guards to shoot at sight. I can't. Why not? Your son Johnny was on his way up here to see you just as Butch broke out. He grabbed hold of him. He's got a gun on him now. Johnny, yeah. what's Cavendish doing to him? Nothing yet. He says he wants to talk to you. I think he's got some kind of a proposition. Tell him to come in. Yes, sir. Here he is, Warden. I'm sorry, Dad. He grabbed me when I wasn't looking. That's all right, son. Let him go, Cavendish. I'm giving the orders here now, Warden. You'll never get out of here alive. Well, if I don't, your kid won't either. I'll use this gun on him, and you know I mean it. What's your deal? I'm taking him out of here with me. You'll get him back safe and sound on one condition. That you let the rest of my gang go free. Don't do it, Dad. I couldn't do that if I wanted to, Cavendish. Your men aren't here now. They're out to the prison farm. I know that. But you let them go free and they get back. They can meet me at one of my old hideouts. How will they know which one? Don't worry, they will. If they're not there by noon Wednesday, you'll never see this kid again. You'll never make it. Your guards won't shoot. They know how crazy you are about Junior here. Come on, you. Get that cowardly rat. Don't lose your head, Warden. He'll kill Johnny for sure. They're letting him out, all right. They don't want to risk hurting the boy. What can I do, Henry? You've got no choice, Warden. It's a Cavendish gang or Johnny's life. Let those outlaws free to harm innocent people? No, Hanley, I can't do that. But, Warden, Johnny. We'll have to find some other way to save him. But how? Nobody but the Cavendish gang know where those hideouts are. They'll never talk. There's someone else who knows. The man who captured the Cavendish gang years ago. The Lone Ranger. If we could only get word to him. Oh, that's impossible, Warden. No one ever knows where he is. Whenever a crime is committed, he knows. Somehow he finds out. If he could only learn about this before it's too late. Back early, Tonto. Where are the supplies? We not get them. No time for food now. What's happened? Word come through to town, Butch Cavendish break jail. Cavendish? Our worst enemy. Him take Warden's son as hostage. Hold him at one of old hideouts. Him say him kill boy if Cavendish gang not free by noon Wednesday. If I know Warden Sears, he's much to want us to release those outlaws, even if his boy's life is at stake. We ride fast. Maybe still time to save him. Not a chance, Tonto. Cavendish had too many hideouts. He could be holding the boy in any one of them. We don't have time to check them all. If we split up, we cover more ground. Yes, but that's trusting too much to luck. What we do then? You ride to Cavendish's closest hideout. If he isn't there, go on to the next one. Maybe you'll reach him before I do. But where you go? To the prison, Tonto. That's the only sure way I can think of to find Butch Cavendish. It's good you're here, friend. And you know that there isn't anything within reason that I wouldn't do to save my boy. But what you suggest... I don't know. I realize it's risky, Warden, but it's better than letting Johnny die. Besides, you won't be freeing the whole gang. Just one man. But one is as bad as all. Besides, this Dooley is no fool, you know. What makes you so sure that he'll lead you to where Cavendish is? 
I'll try not to let him know I'm following him. But if you should get to the hideout, it's two against one. It's bad enough having Cavendish at large without letting his chief henchman go, too. You've got to do it, Warden. Not only for Johnny's sake, but we must get Cavendish back again. All right. We'll risk it. You better wait in the closet. You can bring Dooley in now, Hanley. Dooley, I'm asking you for the last time. Where is Cavendish hiding out with my boy? I wouldn't know. But if I were to let you loose, then you would know, is that it? Or am I? All right, Dooley. You win. I'm going to let you go. And what about the rest of the gang? One at a time. I'm not going to let you out in a group to raid the territory. All right, Warden. That's good enough for me. One at a time. But get this straight. If any harm comes to my boy, you and Cavendish are going to have your neck stretched. Understand? Sure, Warden. Sure, I get it. All right, then. On your way. Not so fast. You must think I'm an awful fool. What do you mean? I know what your game is. It's a trap to catch Cavendish. Five minutes after I'm out of here, half the guards in this place will be on my trail. I give you my word of honor that no guard will follow you out of this prison. And what difference would it make if they did? I know where I'm going. They don't. I could lose a thousand guards by the time I reach Cavendish. Now, you still want to let me go? I want to save my boy at any price. Okay, Warden. I'll go. But on my terms, I ain't tracking around the country in this outfit. I want some new clothes, a horse, and a gun with bullets just in case somebody should try to follow me. Take him out and give him what he wants, and then let him go. Thanks, Warden. You sure treat us prisoners nice. He's a tough customer, Warden. And I hope I've done the right thing. But if he gets away for good, I'll have betrayed the honest people who put me in this job. Don't worry, I'll pick up his trail as soon as he leaves. But I don't trust him. He's liable to lead you on a wild goose chase. I don't think so. Dooley's too sure of himself. But we've only gotten to noon Wednesday. Suppose Dooley doesn't get to Cavendish by then. You forget, Warden, I'm not your only hope. Tyler was looking for Cavendish, too. He's had time to reach some of his hideouts by now. For all we know, he's already rescued Johnny. I can only believe that. idea before. Now I don't have to watch both doors at once. What are you doing now? Just making sure that nobody takes us by surprise. If they try that door over there, they're going to get an awful headache. If they try this one, they're going to get a bullet in the belly. You can't scare Dad into letting your gang go free. He'll never do it. He will if he ever wants to see you again. Well, I guess I won't be needing these anymore. Dad would be cheating the people that trust him if he let those crooks out of jail. I wouldn't want him to do it even if he could. Shut up! You yap too much. She was never coming out of it, Injun. Say, where's that masked man you used to work with? You may not know. Don't lie to me. Where is he? No. Well, I've got other ways of making you talk. No. Wait, me tell. Him in town. Him have business there. You may not know where him is now. That truth. I wonder if I can believe that. Probably not. I'm going to go outside and take a look around just in case. And don't you worry, kid. I'll be back to take care of you. Time's running fast. 
You not be frightened. There's still hope. Don't try to fool me, Indian. We don't have one chance in a million. Who are you, anyway? Me, Tonto, your friend. You not forget one chance in a million better than none. I'm sorry you risked your life to save me. Now we're both gonna die. You give up plenty easy. We not dead yet? We're as good as dead. I wish you'd do it now and get it over with. What if someone on way to rescue us? Who? Nobody could find us here. Friend of Tonto maybe find us. You mean the masked man Cavendish was talking about? That right. Oh, what's the use? Even if he did get here in time, he'd be trapped same as you. You not be too sure. Him never say die. You mean you really think there's a chance for us? There are always chances if you not give up. Well, Engine, I guess you wasn't lying. There's no sign of that masked man. Sure hope you boys wasn't lonesome. We're doing all right. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Because there's nothing like spending what time you've got left being happy. And you haven't got much. Well, I reckon I better set my little trap again just in case that masked man comes snooping around. Poor man who looks half starved. Come in, stranger, and rest a spell. Oh, thank you, ma'am. That's the right kind of you. Oh, nothing like being friendly, we always say. We were just going to take some victuals to a poor sick neighbor. Do you come from these parts? No, ma'am. I've been traveling a long way. Oh, you sure look it. Would you like some nice hot soup to warm your inner? Well, no, not now. I'm awful sorry to bust in on you like this, but I just had to hide Summers. Hide? Who, who, who from? Well, I had a suspicion for the last couple hours that... I've been followed by a bandit. A bandit? Oh, yes, he's awful. That's right, ma'am. A man wearing a mask. He was probably after my hard-earned wages. Oh. oh, I'd like nothing better than to get that ornery skunk. And I can, too, if you ladies will help me. Us? Help you catch a bandit? Do, do you think we could? <laughs> you just tell us what to do, mister, and we'll do anything you say. Oh, good. Well, now, look. I'll pretend to ride away from here. Now, it's my hunch that that masked man has come knocking at that door. Try to find out if I left my money with you. Don't you worry, mister. We'll get rid of him somehow. Oh, but I don't want you to. You gotta find some excuse to keep me here. And I'll circle around the back and sneak in that door there, and we'll catch him red-handed. Oh, I think that's a lovely place. Oh, you can count on us, mister. We'll keep him here somehow. Oh, well, that's fine, ladies. Well, I'll go now. Believe me, the law is gonna be mighty grateful to you for helping to catch this bandit. <laughs> Ask man, just like he said. And he's coming right toward us. I beg your pardon. Oh, Elsie, yes, we have a visitor. Do come in. Thank you, ladies. Do you always welcome masked men with such open arms? Why shouldn't we? You have an honest chin. Besides, we always say it's a man's own business to choose what he wants to wear. I wish more people felt that way. The reason I'm here is... Oh, Ethie, the man looks hungry. Offer him some soup. Thank you very much. I'd like to stay, but I haven't time. You see, I'm trailing a man who just stopped here. I thought he might have harmed you. <laughs> that nice man. He wouldn't harm a fly. I'm afraid he would, ma'am. He happens to be an escaped convict. Oh, he couldn't be one. All he wanted was some, some food for his journey. Did he drop a hint as to where he was headed? Not a word, mister. And uh, we're not the ones to pry. Mm -hmm. 
Then I'd better be after him fast. Oh, before you've eaten, we won't hear of it. Yes, it is true. I'm sorry, I really can't stay. Oh, yes, you can. Reach. Now drop them guns. Easy. Oh, thank goodness you got back. We were afraid we couldn't hold him for you. You've done fine, ladies, just mm -hmm. fine. You're even lower than I thought you were, Dooley, taking advantage of two helpless women. I take my advantages where I find them. Now turn around. Come on. I've been itching to do this for years. Oh! Mr. Dooley, you had no right to strike him. He wasn't hurting you. Shut up. He thought he could trail me to the hideout. Now get in that closet, the both of you. In a closet? That's what I said, unless you want to stay here while I blow his brains out. Oh, Effie, the masked stranger was telling us the truth. We've trapped the wrong uncle. You sure have, and by the time you two old beetle beaks are out of that closet, I'll be with my pal Cavendish, and that Umbre will be dead. Come on. Come kill him in cold blood. Come on, quit your stalling and get in there, you two. Oh, oh, my soup. My soup is boiling. What uh, will I do with it? I don't care what you do with it, so long as you get rid of it. Now, well, come on. Whatever you say, mister. It's true. Call us Beetlebeaks, will you? Huh. Oh, take it easy. There, that rod ought to ease the pain. Are you sure your head don't hurt you anymore or where it hit you? It's fine now, thanks to you both. You keep looking at that clock. Is there anything the matter? That boy I was telling you about. We don't have much time. Dooley, I'm asking you for the last time. Where's Cavendish holding Johnny? Why don't you let me go and follow me? I know you'd never leave me there now. Are you going to let that innocent boy die? That warden's kid don't mean a thing to me. I've never seen a meaner man. Maybe if you'd give him a few jabs with this, he'd mean more gossipy. No, thanks. I don't believe in torture. There must be some other way to make him talk. You're hogtied, mister. Supposing I did talk. How would you know whether I was telling the truth or lying? That's easy. Whenever Effie tells a lie, she blushes. Oh, Essie, hush. <laughs> Wait a minute, ladies. You've just given me an idea. Lots of people blush when they tell lies. It's their hearts that give them away. They pump the blood faster. Mister, I ain't the blushing kind. You don't have to be Dooley to give yourself away. <gasps> I see what you mean. His pulse. That's right, ma'am. Oh, do let us help you. It's a long chance, ladies, but it may work. You keep your fingers on his pulse while I question him. You're a fool if you think I'm going to tell you what hideout he's at. I'm saying no to everything. Go ahead, mister. We're ready. Where's Cavendish hiding? Silver Canyon? No. Twin Forks? No. Eagle Pass? No. Dead Man's Gulch? No. Well, try him again on that one, mister. Dead Man's Gulch? I said no. Oh, my, yes. Oh, that's the one. It must be. His pulse is racing like a house of fire. It's worth a try, ladies. The Dead Man's Gulch is a long ride from here. Take a shortcut over Willow Bridge. Much quicker. I only hope I can make it in time. You ladies keep this outlaw tied up until I get back. You've both been a big help. Thanks. Oh, what a nice man. And just think, Effie, we've captured a real live outlaw. Oh, this is the most exciting time we've had since Grandpa won the horseshoe pitching contest. <laughs> You sure in a long fire hurry, mister. What's the idea of the roadblock? What's the idea of the mask? This mask means the same to me as a badge of office does to a lawman. Why is the road closed? Bridge ain't there no more. The river washed it away last night. Is there any other way across? I'm out of chance. Look, mister, I've got to get to Dead Man's Gulch by 12 noon. If I don't, a boy's going to die. There must be some other way across the river. Well, why didn't you say so? Why right the stream up here to Eagle Pass? The river's not so deep, maybe you and your horse can swim across. Thanks a lot. Dead man's gulch at 12 noon. <laughs> the darn fool, he won't come anywhere near making it. I never figured that a father could care so little for a son. My gang should have been here by now. I told you you wouldn't let him go. And I told you I'd kill you if he didn't. I reckon we both meant it. How much time? One minute. Still doing all right, kid? You not forget what I tell you. Never say die. That's good advice, Ancient. Too bad you can't take it. I'll never give up, Cavendish. Not even after you pull the trigger. You die hard, kid. 
with less than a minute to live and both doors tricked up so nobody can break in and you still figure there's a chance somebody might save you. Oh, I get it. The masked man. Still thinking about him, huh? He's gonna pull a miracle, sneak in just in the nick of time. Him come of him can. From out of nowhere, I suppose. That's right. From out of nowhere. You're too late, Injun. You've been dreaming up fairy tales. Now, I just hope the kid here didn't believe you. Because this is one time they're not coming true. Your time's up, Injun. I'm gonna let you have it first. And there's no masked man standing by to save you. All right, Cavendish. I'll take that other gun. I don't... Trap. Gee, Tonto, you were right. He came from out of nowhere. And then he kicked the door open and Cavendish fired. And then the ranger jumped in and knocked him all over the place. I'm afraid Johnny's exaggerating, Warden. That Mr. Cavendish sounds just as bad as our Mr. Dooley. Oh, that horrible man. And when I think how we trusted him. The important thing is that Cavendish and Dooley are back in prison. Neither of them can hurt anybody again. The most important thing to me is that you've saved my boy's life. And for that, I can never repay you. We not work for pay. We work for justice. He's right, Warden. And justice needs no pay. Well, Tano, it's time to go. If you ladies would like, we'll put you in your carriage. Oh, oh Effie, what a nice man. And so polite. You sure you won't let us take just a peek under that man? And a cushion, Effie. Why, it's not his face that matters. It's his character. And he's just oozing with that. <laughs> you ladies have a good deal of character yourselves. Oh. So long, Johnny. Bye. Bye, Warden. Bye, bye. Gee, Dad, I've never met a man like him before. That's because he's one in a million. He's the Lone Ranger. Hello, Silver Hoy! The Lone Ranger. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Special dispatch for you, Sheriff. The Deputy Federal Marshal in Albuquerque. Come in, sit down. Sorry, I got to warn Big Springs. I'll see you later. So long. Great Scott. What's the matter? Ox Martin's gang was last heard of headed for this territory. Ox Martin's gang? That could mean trouble, Sheriff. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Are you thinking the same thing I am? The stagecoach that left Silverton early this morning headed for this way? I'd be a sitting duck for Ox Martin, gang. What are you going to do? I'm going to get out of Posse to meet that stage. If I'm not too late. Here comes the stage. Right on time, too. Yeah, no one's riding a shotgun. This should be easy. All right, boys, remember what I told you to do. I don't want anything to go wrong. This is an important job for all of us. All right, Ox. Let's go. All right, you. Give him that box. Sure, sure, mister. D -d 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 Don't shoot. I want that sack, too. Well, that's government mail, mister. Come on, give it to me. Why, that's United States property. They'll catch you for sure now. Come on, now, get out of here. Fast. You better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight hundred, nine hundred, a thousand apiece. The boss says to pick your dough and beat it out of here. It's our last job together.
One thousand apiece, boss. Give my share to the boys. I won't need it. Are you crazy, boss? You heard me. They can have the rest of this mail. We don't want anything to do with that, Ox. What's the matter? You scared? Not scared, but stealing mail's a federal offense. All right, you got your money. Now get out of here. Split that up with the boys. Which way are you going, Bill? Hey, maybe they're right, Ox. There's easier ways to make money. But not real money, Pinky. Not lots of real big money, like a gold mine. I don't get you, Ox. What are you talking about? This. I saw him mail it this morning. From Sam Dingle in Rivertown, land claim office in Desert City. Well, why would that old prospector be sending a letter through the mail? Why did he quit working all of a sudden, too? Desert rats like him work till their dying day. Well, maybe he got sick, Ox. Sure. Yeah, he got sick, all right. He got the fever, gold fever. Look, the map locating the claim he wants to file. Then he struck it rich. That's right. Sam Dingle was one of the smartest prospectors I ever heard of. I figured if anyone would find gold, he would. So that's what you've been up to. Well, I knew the money in this job wasn't much. You're right, Pinky. We're through holding up stagecoaches. Let's get out of here. But what do we do? We'll lose him in the hills and then find a place to hide out. You don't have to tell me, Sheriff. The Martin gang got the stage, eh? That's right, John. Held him up at Cedar Pass. Did they get Ox Martin himself? No, they got a couple of his boys. They're bringing him in now. Each of them had over $1,000 on him. Well, there's nothing for you to do now but wait for his next move. Kim was happy. Stage held up. Money box empty. Yes, Tonto, we're hot on Martin's trail. Look at these footprints. Martin must be operating with a whole gang. A gang too big. Them get caught soon. Martin knows that, too. Him break them up after this if him smart. He's smart, all right, Tonto. But too smart to be satisfied in dividing the money with the whole gang. Unless he's after something more than money. Kimasabe, that mail sack. That's right, Tonto. You see, the Overland Express Company signed the government contract to carry the mail three months ago. Why Martin robbed mail? That's what puzzles me. Martin go too far this time. Yes, Tonto. He's endangered the reliability and integrity of the United States Government Postal Service. Kimasabe. A letter with name on it, but empty inside. That's strange. It looks like the only one that's been opened. From Sam Dingle in Rivertown. Sent to land claims office, Desert City. This was important. It's the only thing that Ox Martin was really after. Tony, you put the rest of the mail in the sack and take it back to the express office. Me say, me find it here. But don't say anything about this one yet. I'm going to Sam Dingle's myself. You meet me there later. Dad, what are you doing? What's that look like I'm doing? Fix my boots. Well, why? You won't have to wear them again. Just because I discovered a muddle, though, don't mean that I've got to give up walking. School starts again today. While I'm teaching class, can I trust you not to go near that horrible desert again? Who said it's horrible? I'd rather be out in the desert than the no walls and the wide open spaces than to sit here in a doggone chicken coop. <laughs> well, as soon as you file your claim, you can live here for the rest of your life in solitude. Why don't you go down to the bank and tell them about your mind today? Because I don't trust one of them, that's why. If they find out too soon, every swindler and his brother will be sticking their nose into my diggings, cheating an old man out of all he's got. You're not old. You're just ordinary stubborn. Oh, I'm sorry, Pop. I just want to see you happy. <clears throat> yeah, you just run along to school. And I'll try to find something to do until that claim is filed. All right. Goodbye. City life has a lot of problems, hasn't it? Get out of here, or I'll blow the hide off you. This your letter, Sam? It sure is. 
Where'd you get it? Why, you thieving sidewinder, you've been robbing the mail. If I did, would I be here? Maybe. Who are you, stranger? Have you ever seen one of these before, Sam? Oh, I can't say that. Silver! And that mask. I wore this same mask when I helped your friend Nick Ford out of trouble. Now I remember. The Lone Ranger. Sam, do you know this man? Yeah, he was a dude prospect around here a couple years ago. Asked me a million questions how to find gold. Have you seen him lately? Yes, a few days ago. Still crazy to find gold, but too lazy to look for it. That's very interesting, Sam. Look at this. Ox Martin. So that's his moniker. What's he got to do with that envelope? I found it near the money box of the stagecoach that was held up this morning. I'm sure Ox Martin's a thief. How come? I think he suspects you struck it rich, Sam, and robbed the United States government mail to find out about it. Well, what do you mean? Well, it's not hard to guess what was in that envelope. It was the claim and map to your gold mine, wasn't it? Yeah. For 40 years, I've been searching for that claim. Now, I've lost it. There still may be time, Sam. Still time? How? Well, Martin has to change your claim to put his name on it. That won't take long. That's right. But if you draw up a new claim, I'll take it to Desert City myself. If we hurry, I might be able to get there ahead of him. Why are you doing this for me? It's not just for you, Sam. It's for everyone who places their trust in the government mail. Ox Martin has to be caught and punished to set an example for others who might try the same. I'm for you, partner. Just give me a minute. You got a piece of paper, Pinky? What for, Ox? I told you I had big plans for you, didn't I? Yeah? I'm going to make some copies of this claim. Only this time, they won't be made out to Sam Dingle. Oh, yeah, but you can't use your name. I don't mean to. This time, they're going to be made out to one Pinky Nugent. Well, why me? Because no one west of the Pecos ever heard of you, Pinky. Well, that's why you wanted me to stick with you, huh? That's right. But don't try to double-cross me. Oh, don't worry about that, Ox. Here's a copy of the map you ought to file. You're going to have to ride fast. It's five miles to the claims office in Desert City. I'll join you with the mine later. Well, how will I get there? There's your copy of the mine. Yeah, so I can look over my own gold mine. I'll decide your cut after we've got Sam Dingle out of the way and look over the mine. Come in. Donald, this is Mr. Dingle. Pop. What did you find out in town? Posse thing gang scattered far away like wind. How about Ox Martin? They lose trail, him disappear. Then we'd better be after him fast. Everything all finished? Rare to go. And thanks a lot. Sam, I'll use the old envelope. Oh, I'll get you a new one. Oh, thanks. I'll need this one. I'll get you say. Tom, I want you to go up to the gold mine. Martin may show up there to claim it. Ah. I'll meet you there when I get back from Desert City. I'm sure this will establish your claim. Oh, gone it, Injun. If you're going to the mine, I'm going with her. If there's any fighting, I'm the kind of a man that does his own battling. I'll write a note for my daughter. Hey, Sheriff, where's the claims agent? Wait a minute, I'll get him for you. John, here's some business out here for you. Thanks. I want to register a claim. All right, sir. Hey, hurry it up, can't you? That claim's legal, ain't it? Oh, the claim is legal, all right. I've got to check it with a map. Ah, oh, here it is, Box Canyon. I haven't registered any up in there before. Yeah, that's all in order. Just sign your name right there. Hello? That's all. There's your receipt. Your claim is legally registered. If there's any questions, I'll defer. Up with him, Mr. Mask Man. I'm no bandit. I want to file a claim. Well, the mask got me worried. <laughs> Claim looks legal enough. Wait here a minute, my checker with a map. All right. Oh, 
All right, stranger. Your game's up. We've handled claim jumpers like you before. You were a minute too late. That claim was filed just before you came in. You mean the fellow who just rode away from here? That's him, Pinky Nugent. He must be working with Ox Martin. What's Martin got to do with it? He held up the stage this morning and robbed the mail. How do you know it was Ox? If you let me take after that fellow, I can prove it to you. Take it easy, stranger. Lots of times, probably about 10 years at least. Come on. Sorry, I have to do it this way, Sheriff. But I don't have time to explain. Get in there. This won't get you your claim, mister. No, but it'll keep Ox Martin from getting it. And Pinky Nugent can lead me to him. Inside. When you break out, Sheriff, check the postmark on the envelope. You'll see it was stolen from the stagecoach. Let's get up a posse and cast that masked man. Just a minute, John. I want to check this envelope. What for? I've got a hunch that masked man's on the side of the law. You find anything? No, uh, not a thing. Say, wait a minute. Didn't he say the stage was held up and the mail was robbed? Let's see that. That's what he's trying to tell us. What's that? The stamp. The cancelled stamp. I don't get you. That cancellation carries yesterday's date. That letter was on the Silverton stagecoach. Oh, I see. If the stage hadn't have been robbed, Dingle's claim would have arrived here first. Exactly. I thought that Pinky Nugent was awful nervous about something. I'm getting up a posse to get Pinky Nugent and Ox Martin. Dad, I'm home. Well, that's all right, ma'am. Uh, I'm from the land claims office, checking up on a mine claim. But right now, I'm afraid I'm lost. Well, my father filed a claim for his mine out here. I'm Peggy Dingle. Well, this is a coincidence. I'm checking this very claim he sent me. Well, we're both going in the same direction. Just follow me. Thank you, ma'am. See anything of your match friend, Indian? Me see him soon, maybe. Uh, filing that claim ain't going to do me much good now. What do you mean? I, I lost the gold vein. Talon collapsed on the vein since the last time I saw it. Vein must be somewhere. Yes, but where? Then you dig more. Uh, afraid I can't. Like my daughter said, I, I ain't as young as I used to be. Are you too old for work like that? Yeah. What do you mean, too old? Look here, Indian. I can whip you right now if I don't mind to. Don't get scared. I ain't gonna whip you. You're my friend. You know, quickly, I got an idea. Blasting powder. Get me a, that blasting powder. Put it right there. We'll use it later. Uh, get me another can. Right. Open your mouth and I'll tell you. Go on, get in there. Dad! One move out of either of you and I'll blast her to bits. Drop that gun engine. Why, you yellow livid rat. So this is what made you climb up. Struck it rich, huh? The joke's on you, you sniveling skunk. The mine tunnel fell down and hid the vein. There ain't any gold. So you were going to blast to find it again. Why, you dirty! Shut up or you'll get the same. Stay away from him. I'm going to ask him some questions. Please, can't you see he's an old man? Not too old or at this skunk. Where were you going to blast, Dingle? That's none of your business, tenderfoot. Oh. Let him alone. Come on, tell me which tunnel. Talk! No! Oh. oh, Daddy, Daddy! You going to tell me where to blast, Dingle? No! All right. Give me that rope. What are you going to do? I'm going to tie up both of you and blast off the front of this mine. And you three with it. Come on, give it to me.
had enough. Not quite, Pinky. There's a long sentence awaiting you in a federal prison. Yeah? What for? For theft of United States mail. It was Ox who did that, not me. You registered a stolen claim belonging to Sam Dingle. I didn't make that copy. Claim jumping is a mighty serious offense, Pinky. You're through. Well, what are you going to do to me? I'm going to tie you up and keep you here while I try to keep Ox Martin from committing the same crime. Over to that tree. No, you can't do that. Oh, can I? Just watch me. But we can't do you any more harm. I can. If he'd let me loose for a minute. So you like the great outdoors, eh, Dingle? Well, you're going to be blown right out into it. No! How do you know you can flash for the gold? You were sure enough to stop trying, would you? Give you plenty of time to say your prayers. They'll get you for this, Ox. You'll pay for it. Maybe I will. But by then, I'll pay for it with gold. Piles of it. It's a mother load, isn't it, Sam? You wouldn't claim anything but the best, would you, Sam? You're crazy, Ox. Crazy as a coyote. Crazy? Maybe I am. But I'm getting something that I always wanted, which is more than you can say. Better, King Sami. Where's Sam and Donna? We're right here, Tano. Oh, you got him, eh? Good work, stranger. We found his partner on the road. He got here just in time to save us all from being blown up. Yeah. This old Martin fellow is touched with the worst case of gold fever I ever did see. Well, we'll take care of him, don't worry. What about Sam's claim, Sheriff? Uh, we'll straighten that out when we get back to the office. On your feet, Ox. Let's go. Fine. Now the claim is legally yours. That's where you're wrong, mister. That claim was legally registered to me first. First come, first serve. That's the law, ain't it? That's where you made a mistake, Ox. You left the envelope that held Sam's claim near the stage holder. What's the envelope got to do with it? You forgot about how the mail service works, Ox. The canceled stamp carried yesterday's date on it. If the mail hadn't been stolen, Sam's claim here would have arrived a full day ahead of Pinky's. This masked man gave us a clue when he left the envelope here to go after you fellas. I'm so glad. Now you can retire. Retire? Don't be ridiculous. I'm going to blast that powder just where we placed it. It's bound to uncover the gold. Folks will be glad to know there are two less claim jumpers around here. Yes, but more important, a man who has robbed the United States mail has been caught and will be brought to justice. Uh, that'll teach him to interfere with the government mail. Well, you have your masked friend to thank for that. Mm. Why, he's gone. Who is he anyway? You mean to tell me you don't know who the mask man is? No. Peggy, your dad has just been helped by none other than the Lone Ranger. with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Well, Knife, we're halfway there. Thought you told the marshal I'd never get you to Abilene. You still got halfway to go. It's lucky for you we have no judge in Petersville. You'd be tried and convicted by now. Figure that's what's gonna happen to me when we get to Abilene? Why don't you give up, law man? Marshal's already lost three of his best deputies in this run. Think you're gonna have any better luck? I'm sure of it. Because wherever you go, I go. I left the keys behind. The other three deputies were handcuffed to their prisoners, too. 
say, whatever happened to them lawmen? I wish I knew, Knife, because if I did, I might be taking you to Abilene to stand trial for murder instead of just robbery. Okay, boss. I got him. Rex Craig. You, an outlaw. That's right, Parker. And a good one. How's the driver, Biddle? Don't worry, he ain't dead, boss. Just out cold. Good. Hide our horses in the usual place. Knife and I can take care of this, hombre. There you go. Get him out of there. Stagecoach, Toto. The driver not stop there unless there be trouble. Come on. Just a scalp wound, Tonto. He should be all right after he comes to. Coach empty. Everything seems to be all right up there. Whoever did this must have been after the passengers. You think another deputy? Yes, I do, Tonto. Knife Norton was due in Abilene tomorrow for trial. This coach would have brought him in just on time. Tracks here. Maybe three, four men. Mark of heavy weight dragged from coach. Maybe body. We'd better follow the footprints. We'll leave Silver and Scout here and go ahead on foot. Come on. No use, Kimasabi. We lose tracks way back. Tonto, look. Cabin looked deserted. Not like the outlaws come here. There's only one way to find out. You stay here and keep me covered. If there's any trouble, come in fast. Uh, maybe ready, Kimisabe. Come in. Howdy, stranger. Make yourself to home. Thank you. Folks call me Uncle Taffy. <laughs> Say I'm a bit touched in the head. Reckon as to how I am, maybe. That's a right well-fitting mask you're wearing. It seems to frighten most people. Doesn't it bother you? <laughs> when a man gets to be my age, takes more than a mask to scare him. <laughs> if you're here to do me hurt, you'll do it, mask or no mask. If you're here peaceable, well, Take none of my business why you're wearing a mask. I'm here, Peaceable. Draw up a chair and sit. I'm looking for some information. Ain't got much of that. Glad to give you what I got. You live here alone? Sure do, mister. Ain't budged off of this land for 20 years, ever since I bought it to dig for gold. <laughs> Twerk no gold, though. I see. You're a miner, then. There used to be, not no more. You ever have visitors? Sure do. <laughs> Having one right now. <laughs> no, I, I mean others. Talk clear, young fella. Such as what? Well, the stagecoach was held up about a mile from here. I think its passengers are being hidden nearby. You don't say. Shouldn't be hard to find. Ain't many places around here for a man to hide. I know that. That's what I can't understand. How can three deputies in a row disappear right off the face of the earth? And now maybe a fourth. I take it you're a lawman yourself. Sometimes. You better be on your guard in case those outlaws show up. <laughs> I ain't so old I can't handle a gun against them varmints. I hope you're right. Hey, share yourself, young fella. Adios. What'd you find out, Kimasabe? Nothing, Tonto. Just a quaint old man who wouldn't hurt a fly. We'll ride into town and see what we can find out. Let's go. Come up now, boys. He's gone.
<laughs> How's the new deputy doing? Not so good. I had to swipe them again to keep them quiet. Come on, Uncle Taffy, get out your file and go to work on these cuffs. You're sick of being chained to this dead weight. Hold your horses, knife. It's a lucky thing you spotted that mask hombre headed this way, Uncle Taffy. He might have caught us red-handed. You should let me plug him, boss, before he ever got inside. You're a fool, knife. How do we know there weren't others with him? This way he leaves without suspecting anything. <laughs> That's right. Thinks I'm just a simple-minded old-timer. Wouldn't have no truck with outlaws. <laughs> Hurry up, Uncle Taffy's coming, too. There you are. What is this place? <laughs> you hear that, boys? He wants to know what this place is. Well, I'll tell you, son, it's a trap. A death trap. <laughs> what are you going to do to me? The same thing we did to those other three deputies. <laughs> you see? So that's where you got rid of them. Makes a real fine death trap, don't you think? Dark and deep. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I don't get it, Craig. You of all people. What have you got against law and order? Law and order means two bosses in town. The marshal and me. There's only room enough for one of us. You'll never get rid of him that way. Won't I? Just give me time. Come on, knife. He's lived long enough. Any last messages, Parker? Too bad I can't ever tell your kid where you're buried. <laughs> I just heard about Joe Parker, Marshal. Is he still missing? Same as the others. Anything I can do to help? I don't need a lawyer, Rex. I need a new deputy. <laughs> Afraid I'm not that brave, Marshal. Can't blame you. There isn't a man in town willing to take Parker's place. Well, if you need me, you know where my office is. Thanks, Rex. said about Marshall. You didn't get hurt. Jimmy, what are you doing to that gun? I'm going to give you the same medicine my father got. You gone crazy, kid? Don't move. Jimmy, I didn't do anything to your father. No, you just sent him out to be killed, that's all. We have no proof that he's dead. We don't need proof. He's gone like all the others, isn't he? The finest man in the whole town. He didn't have to take the job, but you made him. Jimmy, your father volunteered to be one of my deputies. He was just as anxious to bring law and order to this town as I. Law and order. All you've brought is trouble and killing. I'm not to blame for that. The outlaws are. I don't know who's to blame. I only know I'm not going to let it happen again. It was better without law and order. And I'm getting rid of you right now. Hey, let me go. Thanks, mister, for coming in when you did. Fine, Marshal, you are saying thanks to a masked outlaw. He can't be an outlaw. Outlaws don't waste their time saving the lives of marshals. Still, I'm curious about that mask. I have reasons for keeping my identity a secret, Marshal. You're quite a fighter, young man. You'll have to excuse him, mister. He's kind of wrought up. His father was one of my deputies, disappeared this morning. Now take it easy, Jimmy. I'm sorry, Marshal. I guess killing you wouldn't bring my dad back. Was his father the man who was taking Knight Morton back to Abilene? Yes, my fourth deputy. When this trouble start? The day I took over, Injun. This was here when I opened this place three months ago. If you know what's good for you, you will go back where you came from. If you don't, we'll drive you back. We're the law and order in this town. And it's unsigned. But if they want to get rid of you, why don't they kill you? That's the funny part of it. They don't kill anybody. That is, that I can prove. What about your four deputies? Where are the bodies? You've got to have a corpse to have a murder charge. You don't have any idea who's behind these crimes? Somebody that's so smart and slippery, I can't lay a finger on them. Do they try to rescue any criminal you send to Abilene with a deputy? So far they have. You have idea, Kimasabi? Yes, Taro. That is, if the marshal can find a new deputy. Not a chance. After what's just happened, there isn't a man in this town that's got nerve enough to take on the job. There's one, Marshal. Oh, Jimmy, you're too young. I'm old enough to ride a horse and fire a gun. If you won't let me be your deputy, I'll go after those outlaws alone. What do you think? If he wants to go on a manhunt, why not let him help us? Thanks, mister. Hello, Jim. This isn't going to be any picnic. If my plan works, your life will be in great danger. Whatever happened to those other four deputies might happen to you. 
My father died to bring law and order to this town. His death won't mean much if I don't follow through for him. Good boy, Jim. Now, Marshal, here's my plan. Put up hand. What is this? Let me take the money. On your feet, Injun. Trying to hold me up, huh? What happened, Marshal? Who's the Injun? Saw me coming out of the bank, tried to hold me up. Why, the no good Indian. We ought to string him yeah, up. Yeah, I think you're right, Pete. Oh, no, you don't. I'm here to keep the law, not to break it. He'll be sent to Abilene for trial. Who's going to take him, Marshal? I thought you'd run clean out of deputies. Well, not quite, Rex. I got a new one this morning. Who are you, Indian? Me not tell. I have it your own way. Reckon a, a lawyer wouldn't help him much anyway. What with you catching him red hand? Oh, he's entitled to legal advice, Rex. Better drop around later and see him. Whatever you say, Marshal. Come on, Indian, get going. I've got a nice warm cell for you. Thanks, Mr. Gotcha. Where's the marshal? Him go out for lunch. Oh. Uh -huh. Well, I might as well talk to you now anyway. Who are you? I'm a lawyer. If you want advice, I can give it to you. You may not need advice. I think you do. It was a pretty stupid stunt today, trying to hold up a marshal. You may not see him badge. You work alone or with a gang? That's my business. Look, Indian, I'm going to do some straight talking. But if you repeat a word of it to the marshal or anyone else, I'll call you a liar and swear I didn't say it. And they believe me, not you. Me not understand. It's like this. We've got no judge in this town. So you'd be taken to Abilene for trial. If you're lucky, you may get off with 20 years. That plenty long time. You should have thought of that before you held up the marshal. Uh, maybe there are other way out. You're smart, Indian. There is a way, uh, expensive way. What do you mean? If you never get to Abilene, then you can't be tried, can you? And that's plenty good plan. You have a way it can work? I have. But it costs money. How much? A thousand dollars. That's plenty big sum. Mm -hmm. Well, how about you got any friends around here who can raise the money for you? Uh, there one maybe can help. Good. Tell me where he is and I'll get word to him. No, him no, me need help. He'd better. Because if that money isn't in my office by tonight, you'll be in Abilene by tomorrow. Money be there. I wouldn't go for that gun. This is a holdup, mister. I keep my money in the bank, not here. It's no holdup. I'm here on business. I don't usually do business with masked men. If it's legal services you need, What's that for? A fee for your legal services. I understand you can arrange for a certain Indian friend of mine not to reach Abilene tomorrow. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't take bribes. I must have misunderstood. Just a minute. Like I said, I'm strictly legal. If you want to hire me to be your friend's lawyer and get him off as lightly as possible, I reckon I could accept that money as a retainer in advance. A retainer, then? Do you guarantee to get my friend off lightly? I'm a respectable lawyer, mister. You don't think I'd take your money under false pretenses. Just uh, how and when do you intend to do this? That's my business. You pay the fee, I'll be the lawyer. Whatever you say. Knife. Yeah, boss? You know who that was just left? Voice well, sounded mighty familiar through the door. It should. He was a masked man in Uncle Taffy's cabin. Him? What do you want with you? He wanted to pay me $1,000 to keep that Indian from reaching Abilene. Oh, I don't get it. I do. A neat little put-up job, the whole thing. A masked man and Indian are in cahoots with the marshal. You mean they know about Uncle Taffy's cabin? No, but they're trying awfully hard to find out. That means they're expecting us to hold up the stage tomorrow. We can't do it. Can't we? It's a clever little trap they've set. Only one thing wrong. They're the ones who are going to get caught in it. You're in your place about a hold-up now. Do you not lose head when outlaws strike? Don't worry, Tonto. You give the orders. I'll take them. The stage should be by here any minute, Marshal. Well, I hope Jimmy plays his part well. Oh, you can count on the kid, all right. Is this where they held the stage up last time? Just about. They may not strike in the same place twice. Get a cup. Sounds like it's down the road about a mile, I'd say. I think you're right, Marshal. Come on.
exactly the same as last time, Marshal. Driver unconscious, but not dead. I only hope we can catch them before anything happens to Tonto and Jimmy. It's a funny thing, but these tracks lead directly north. But there's nothing there except Uncle Taffy's cabin. Uncle Taffy? Maybe he isn't such a lovable character after all. Come on, Marshal. You keep promise plenty good. Me go free now? No, Indian, you don't go free. As soon as your masked friend gets here, you and he are going to get the same medicine as the kid. Tonto, he knows. That's right, Junior. I know. You got it straight what you're going to do now? I never make mistakes, but are you sure the masked man's coming? Positive. Either alone or with the marshal. They lost our tracks, but I made certain they knew which direction to take. What about them two? We'll keep them hidden back at the cabin. <laughs> Neatest trick I ever heard of. This masked man is smart, Uncle Taffy. He may not disappear as easily as the others. Leave him to me. I can handle him. Now get outside, all of you. enough. Maybe, Marshal. But I'll go in there alone. If it is a trap, there should be one of us left alive to bring back a posse. Well, if you're not out in a few minutes, I'll sneak around the back and see what I can find out. Right. Come right on in. The door is open. How did you know I was out there? <laughs> Reckon as you might say, I got eyes in the back of my head. What can it do for you this time? You can tell me what's become of my Indian friend and the deputy. How would I know? The coach was held up less than a mile away. Just like the last time. The tracks led in this direction, just like the last time. Got no idea what you're talking about. You're shielding outlaws. That's a crime in itself. You'd better give them up. If you think so bad of me, young man, why don't you take me into town and turn me over to the marshal? I intend to. But first, I'm taking a look around. Go right ahead. I'm going to tie you up so you can't give any alarm. Don't mind a bit. Come on ahead. Take care of you, mister. Come on in, boys. He's joined the others. You sure he's dead? Ain't no doubt about it. I heard him hit bottom. Then get the handcuffs off these two. We can't drop them down the shaft together. <laughs> Three of them in one day. I ain't done such good business in years. <laughs> That does it, boss. Yeah. Drop the Indian in first, then the kid. Great, Marshal.
When are you sending those two to Abilene, Marshal? As soon as my deputies get here with Beetle. I've got a whole slew of volunteers now that we've rounded up the top men. That's fine. And you never find better deputy than Jimmy. Don't you worry, Tonto. I aim to make him a permanent fixture here if he'll stay. I sure will, Marshal. Well, you won't need us anymore. Tonto will be moving. Good luck, Jim. Marshal. Thanks, mister. That masked man sure came through and we needed him most. He usually does, son. Do you know who he is? That's the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Any sign of them? No, Kimasabi. Them hide under cover. Maybe them not come this way. Well, they have to come this way, Tano. It's the only way to the border where they won't be spotted and stopped. They're somewhere in this territory. Did you see Sheriff Whalen? Him wait for you. And Simpson, the banker? Sheriff him say him make bank away too. Then let's get back to camp and I'll put on that disguise. Sheriff, I can't stay here all morning. You work by the clock in your bank, Mr. Simpson. But we can't work that way in the business of upholding law. My friends will be here. They're being very mysterious. That Indian might at least have given you a hint. Tonto says what he's supposed to, no more, no less. Hardy. Howdy, old timer. What can I do for you? You can stir your stumps and give a fellow the kind of protection you get paid to give him. Look, mister, I got 15 pokes of gold dust out there in my borrow. I'd like to know who's going to keep it from falling into the hands of desperadies and road agents. Well, now, hold on. 15 pokes of gold dust. Hold back on them eyes. They're hanging on your cheeks like grapes. Yep, 15 pokes, and pretty near 32 ounces to the poke. <laughs> Come here, partner. Let him look at a couple of fellas who know where gold is and <laughs> how to well, find don't it. don't leave it out there unguarded. A gold strike. We'll have a boom town here. <laughs> Meet the pard. <laughs> Tonto. <laughs> I should have known. Come on in. Hello, Jim. Thought if I could fool you, I could fool anyone. You sure enough fooled me if I didn't know Tonto so I wish well. somebody'd tell me what this is all about. This is Martin Simpson. How do you do, Mr. Simpson? There's a young man under those whiskers. The man I told you about. This is Tonto, his Indian friend. Well, and the story of the gold strike? Fake, Mr. Simpson, just like my whiskers. But I don't want anyone to know it's a fake. You'll have to give me a very good reason. Well, his reasons are usually good enough. Well, what is it? What brings you to Sandstone? We're trying to smoke out a couple of murders who broke jail in Arrow City. Dimple Henshaw and Soapy Farrell. You sure don't waste any time. Hand Bill just come in on the stagecoach on those two this morning. Dimple Henshaw. He got that crease in his chin during a fight with me some time ago. And those murderers are in this territory? Yes, it's their only way to the border. We've got to corral them before they cross it. Well, why bother? Let them go, I say. Good riddance. No trouble, no fuss. Just forget them. Forget the children they've orphaned, the widows they have made. Justice demands that these men be made to pay for their crimes. They're killers who will continue to kill on both sides of the border unless we stop them. Well, when you put it that way, I agree. I agree heartily. They should be caught. Now, we'll be on the lookout. And so will I, but behind the barricaded doors of my bank. But why do you want to see me? What have I got to do about this? Mr. Simpson, I want you to keep your bank open. They have guns and horses, but they need money badly. They may drop in on you at any time. You mean, you want to use me as bait? You want me to stand there in my bank and invite them in for a gunfight? Kima Sabe have good plan. Maybe they won't call on you, Simpson. They may get their funds elsewhere. I hope not, Sheriff. That's the reason for the disguise and the fake gold I'm going to deposit in your bank. Let's make it the worst kept secret in the history of gold mining. But I'm a peaceable man. But Henshaw and Farrell aren't. By the way, Sheriff, how are you fixed for help? He's not fixed. All he's got is that young deputy, Bud Titus. He spends most of his time in the barbershop getting slicked up and daydreaming. Oh, he's still got a lot to learn. That's all like anybody. He hasn't seen this handbill yet. When he does, more daydreams. I reckon the solid truth is that Bud doesn't keep his mind right proper on the job. 
One careless move with Henshaw and Farrell, and the penalty may be death. Oh, Bud's all right. I believe in the big kid. <laughs> Even if he is my wife's favorite nephew, we can count on him. I hope we can. Now, gentlemen, here's my plan.
Buenos dias, señor Chavi. Buenos dias. Why weren't you at my office at the meeting, bud? You spend more fool time getting polished up. The meeting, yeah. Well, I didn't forget. I've been busy here keeping my eye on things. You know, they couldn't have flea jump in this town without me seeing them from right here in this barber shop. Maybe. I'd like you to see this. A couple of outlaws on the loose. That's what the meeting was about. Oh, I'm sorry I missed it. But you know, Sheriff, I'm always on the job. Tony, tell them about them two saddle bums that just run out of town. Oh, two bad bombers. They got whiskers like iron. Break my razor, I think. Why'd you run them out? Well, like I told you, there was... There was a couple of range tramps. What's the matter? Nothing. You look like you've swallowed an apple without chewing it. I just reading about this $5,000 reward. If I had that, I could buy me a ranch. Now, bud, those two saddle bums you ran out of town, are you looking at their faces right now? Why, Sheriff, what do you think I am? Sometimes I get real curious. What about it, Tony? Were those men in here? You mean here, maybe? Don't you tell them, Tony. Either you take my word or you take my badge. Now, bud. No, I don't work for nobody. You don't take my word. But I do take your word. I resign anyway. Now, you young pup, you're fired. Well, now, uh, now, wait a minute, bud. You can't quit. Not yet, anyway. It's too late, Uncle. Now, wait. Plans have been made about those two. I need your help. You wouldn't be figuring on capturing them, maybe. That's the whole idea. Well, they're going to be captured, OK, so don't worry. Captured by me. Alone. You. Alone. <laughs> don't be silly. You don't even know where to start looking. Well, maybe I don't, and maybe I do. Run along, Unc. You darn daydreaming young pup. Senor Bart, maybe you're wrong. You just threw your job away. No job, no pay. Well, that's the whole idea, don't you see, Tony? If I bring in these two outlaws while I'm still deputy sheriff, this county don't pay me any reward. But if I'm just a private citizen, $5,000. And all I got to do is take off after these two and bring them in. See you later, Tony. That's all he's got to do. Bring a couple of killers. All right, Barber. They kill us. Madre mia. Now, how about a shave? Si, senor. Madre mia. All right, snap it up. Si, senor. And if he draws one drop of blood out of me, blow daylight through him. Please, senores. I've got three kids. Let's talk a little, Tony. Who's the richest man in town? I don't know. Maybe Mr. Simpson, over there. The army that runs that bank? Si, senor. They keep much cash in there? I don't know. I'm just a barber. Ah, quit your kidding. Barbers know more about what's going on than anybody. What? Hey, Dimples. So, Sheriff, come on. We're going to keep you covered from the rear. You even look like you've seen us, and your kids left to beg in the streets. Hurry. Tony, where'd Bub go? Why, senor, he just left a little while ago. Didn't change his mind about his quitting. Him not say, just leave. I guess he really meant it. Good spot, huh? Plenty good. With Bub gone, you'll have to watch from here. That's all right. What, what is going to happen? Sorry to have to do this, Tony. The township will pay for any damage. Damage? I guess you heard about the heap of gold just deposited in the bank. See, I know. Well, we got word those two desperados I was telling Bud about are heading this way. We don't aim to be taken by surprise. Two, two desperados? Don't you worry, Tony. Maybe they'll never show up. Who you shave, huh? Brush have plenty of fresh leather. You not need shave. Nobody here when we come in. See? It is correct. Get him up. Turn around. This is the talkingest town in the southwest. By now, everyone knows there's gold in the bank and how much. Well, let's hope that Dimple Henshaw and Farrell hear about it and come after it. 
trouble I had. Not telling the folks about that, but making them promise to stay off the street if shooting starts. They did promise. Sure. No one likes to get plugged. I wonder who that is with Tony. That's Henshaw. Hold it, Sheriff. He's got the barber covered. What's Tonto doing about this? They both got their backs to him. Why doesn't he do something? Just what I intend to find out. Sheriff, you keep the back door of the bank covered. Soapy Farrell must be around here, too. Shoot, we might hit Tony or Tonto. We'll have to see what they do next. I don't know who's using the pop guns, Barbara, but tell your friends if any lead comes this way, you're going to get it. She, she, she. Please! Please, everybody! He's going to kill me! He'll shoot! All I've got to get! Be kids! Come on! Please! Now we've got to do something. Poor Tony. Is there a back door to the barbershop? Jump in, Jupiter. I forgot. Sure there is. That must be the way the killers got in there. Cut around to the back. Keep your eye on that door. I'll keep them covered from here. Brother Henshaw? Hello, Bonanza. Yeah. Who are you shooting at? A fellow with a mask on. He's the engine's pal. I got him pinned back in an alcove down the street there. The one that gave me this dimple? Uh-huh. I'm going to get him. I get it. We got to hightail out of here. Look who's excited. You said that mask man's out in the street. I'm going to get him. Well, let him stay there. Now that we got the goal, it's right for the border. Get out of my way. Hey, get hold of yourself, will you, Henshaw? This is our only chance. We'll swing if they catch us. They won't swing me. Well, not if we play it smart, they won't. Let's take this dust and the barber to keep him from shooting at us and light out. And we can come back when we got a plan. I got a plan. I'm taking that masked hombre alive. You're crazy. Sure. What do you want him alive for? So I can kill him. Slow. Here's another 10 star. Well, why bring him in here? Makes it cozier. Why you should keep him like this? He's a family man. I told you to shut up. Hey, you outside. You in the mess. Can you hear me? This is Henshaw. Dimple Henshaw. Go ahead, Henshaw. Keep talking. Soapy Farrell and the sheriff just shot it out. They're both dead. Just how you're going to end up, Henshaw. Barbershop surrounded. Both ends of the street blocked. Come out with your hands high. I know. I'm ready to give myself up. To you. He was starving. Him trying to check. Please, Senor. Please don't do it, Senor. Don't do it. Don't do it. Over here. I got an idea. Henshaw, throw your gun into the street and come out. Now, wait a minute. I'm giving up. So I'm saying how. All right, how? What do you want? Protection. That's why I'm not walking out. Somebody out there might be trigger happy. I'll toss out my gun. You come in here and get me. I'll never do it. Huh? You forget I know this joker. He'd be crazy to. He'll do it. Because we'll give these birds a chance. Now get out. Play dead. Come on, pal. You got my word. Here's my gun. Howdy. It's been a long time. We'll talk after you've untied my friend. Now step back, Henshaw. Get him up. That's what I wanted to see. Take his gun, Sylvie. Give me that razor. Si, senor. I got a good use for razors. Get over there. I'm going 
going to do a lot of things to you before we leave you here. Yeah. Remember how I got this dimple under my whiskers? Chip off a rock when you were throwing lead my way. I'm going to carve one on you now, but slow, with a razor. Give me that gun, Soapy. Over here. Put that engine to sleep again, Soapy. Sure. With this. Lay off, Phil. Hey, Dimples, it's Sam, isn't he? Senor Bach, where have you been? 5,000 Samoyeds. Maybe more. How much on your head? The sheriff's been hurt. He needs help. I see him. That's my uncle. And if he dies, I'll pull the rope that hangs you, you murdering polecats. You young pup. Put up that iron and help me. What do you mean? I got the drop on him. I captured all four of them without firing a shot. I got a reward coming to me. $5,000. You got plenty coming to you. You won't call it any reward. Better. Tonto, you all right? Yes, he must have me all right. Tell me, stop the sheriff. Si, senor. What's going on here? Was this the only way to capture them? Hinshaw slugged my bookkeeper and wrecked my bank. Who's going to pay for this? But, senor Simpson, it isn't my fault. I do nothing. You did a lot, Tony. You made it possible to capture these men. Simpson, I wouldn't worry about the damage. Tony has $5,000 coming to him. Madre mia, no. I don't get this. I don't get any of it. Don't make much difference if you don't. Tie up those outlaws and lug them off to jail. But I went out looking for them. All alone. I looked all over. It was very brave of you, bud. But Tony has a different kind of courage. He didn't fight for any reward. He fought to save a man who meant nothing to him. Five thousand dollars? Fifty thousand shaves? Gracias, senores. Gracias, senor. Hey, I better ask for my badge back. I'm going to need a job. <laughs> I'll think about that. Everybody's against me. 50,000 shaves. Senor, wait. This senor, this senor with the mask, he's gone. I'll send somebody after him. That's the kind of a man you need for a deputy. I reckon he takes on bigger jobs than that, Simpson. <laughs> you see, he's a lone ranger. Hello, Silver! Hello! horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. The soldiers we saw back on the trail. Sounds like they're in trouble. If Greyhawk's babes attack them, they'll not have much chance. Let's go. Ambushers. Looks like we've got friends. Ambushers like to give surprises, not receive them. You scare them, Kimasabi. They'd disappear. Can't see anyone, but whoever it is arrived just in time. Let's get down to the soldiers. There's a few questions I want to ask them. Come on. Two men, Lieutenant. They're headed this way. Good. Hey, one of them is masked. Must be a bandit. Hold your fire, Murphy. I don't care whether he's a bandit or not. I still want to shake his hand. Howdy, mister. We owe you our lives. Those Indians really had us pinned. You won't have any more trouble, Lieutenant. We just saw them right off. How's the wounded man? Losing a lot of blood. Me fix him. 
and bind leg tight to baboon. Stop bleeding. That engine knows his business. You'll have your man in traveling shape in no time at all. You were putting up a good fight against those Indians, Lieutenant. A losing fight, you mean? I never thought Black Eagle's men would try to ambush an army patrol. They were Black Eagle's men, but not anymore. What do you mean? They're renegades now. Broke away from the tribe a few months back. They're following a young chief who stole all of Black Eagle's gold. Calls himself Greyhawk. You seem to know a lot about them. I've made it my business to investigate. I wish I had a full troop under my command. I'd investigate them right out of this territory. You'd need a full troop, Lieutenant. <laughs> but I admire your spirit. You see, Greyhawk's warriors are using the latest army rifles. Oh, uh, I can't believe that. Think back, Lieutenant. The band that just attacked you was halfway up that slope. Too far away to get you without the latest rifles. But they did get you. Rather, they got your man there. Why, well, yes. Only the new rifles do have that range. Surprise, isn't it, Haynes? Say, besides knowing about our rifles, you know my name, too. Who are you, anyway? I'm no outlaw, as you probably think. That's hard to believe, you wearing that mask and all. Major Pollard, uh, <laughs> pig face, I think you call him. He's a new commandant at Fort Maddox, isn't he? Yes, and that's his, well, that's our nickname for him. You even know that. I know a lot about Fort Maddox. You see, I'm trying to prevent a war between the Indians and the whites. Somehow, I've got to find out how those Indians got the rifles. The only place they could get them is at the fort. <laughs> but we don't hand them out to the Indians. I'm not so sure, Lieutenant. What do you mean? I think I can prove otherwise with your help. Well, what do you want me to do? Lieutenant, when you get back to the fort, spread the news around about the Indians having those new rifles. Study the reaction to this news and let me know what happens. No harm in that, I guess. But uh, where will I find you again? You know the cave west of the fort? Yes. Meet me there tomorrow morning at 9. Sure thing. You were detailed to find a supposedly hostile tribe of Indians, which was reported in this area, Lieutenant. Your failure to do so is one more indication of your unfitness for life on the frontier. Private Johnson was wounded, Major, in an ambush set by the very Indians we were looking for. We had to return. You should have gone ahead without him. Sir, in my opinion, it's no use looking for those Indians unless we can send out troops in force. Before I send out a large number of men, we must first find the Indians' camp. When we do that, Major, we must be prepared to fight. Those Indians are equipped with the latest Army Springfields. What gave you that preposterous idea? The range of their arms, sir, when they fired at us. Are you offering this remarkable flight of imagination as an excuse for your failure to find the Indians' camp? No, sir. Then you have no excuse. Sir, I made my report. There are no excuses necessary. I see. Sergeant? The lieutenant is under arrest. Take him to the guardhouse. But, but Major, arrest, I don't understand. Come, Lieutenant. Don't understand failure to carry out orders. Lock him up. I'll prefer charges later. He is to speak to no one. Yes, sir. Sir? Get the storekeeper. I want to talk to him. Yes, sir. Sorry, Lieutenant. The Major's a hard man to figure. Yes, he certainly is. Oh, Sergeant, something I'd like you to do for me, a favor. Lieutenant, I can't do anything for you. I shouldn't even have spoken. But, Sergeant, this is... Sorry, sir. I have to obey orders, too. I understand. Fool savages. I told them not to use those guns in this area. But what gave Lieutenant Haynes the idea they were army rifles? The range, Asa. Simple. But he has no proof, though. He can't tie us in with them. I know. But before he talks more about the rifles, I've got to get rid of him. Maybe the men on his patrol, too. Murphy and Johnson. Murphy? Good. He's been a big bother lately. In what way? Well, he's been hanging around the storeroom a lot. Sort of checking up. I surprised him in there yesterday. Find any rifle shortages? No, I got rid of him before he did. But he'll come back. I never realized we had so many curious young soldiers here. Well, there's a couple of other things going on I don't like, Pollard. I've got a feeling that I've been followed. The last two times I made trips out to Greyhawks. Followed? Why didn't you say something before? Well, I wasn't sure. But yesterday, 
On my way back, I saw a masked hombre turn off the trail up ahead of me, disappear in the brush. He was riding a big white horse. A white horse? Uh, it couldn't be anyone from here. No white horses on the post. I know, but I just didn't like him seeing me near Greyhawk's hangout. I don't think we've got to worry about an outlaw on a white horse. But we do have the problem of Lieutenant Haynes and cohorts. And I've got an idea. What's your plan? You ride up to see Greyhawk now and tell him that I'm sending out a detail. Out of there, on the trail from Fort Maddox. And that storekeeper we see before. I wonder if Lieutenant Haynes threw a scare into him. He's heading for Greyhawk's camp. Me take shortcut there. Pretend to be lone Indian who want food. Find out what him do with him go there. Good idea, Tonto. Greyhawk won't be suspicious of you. I'll give you something to trade for a meal in case he won't give you a handout. Me try not to use it. Good. Come back as soon as you can. I'll meet you at camp. Good luck. Oh, open up your Me, Tonto, come from North Country. Not understand. Speak white man language, then. What do you want? Me hungry. Want food. Maybe sleep here tonight. You pay with gun? No. This buy plenty food, silver. Give him food. Take gun. Howdy, Greyhawk. I've got something for you. Greyhawk not buy more rifles from Pollard. Him got all Greyhawk's gold now. <laughs> I'm not trying to sell you any rifles this time. I've got a gift instead from Pollard. Gift? The Major's sending some men into the hill tomorrow. A small van to look for your camp again. Him promise not to do that. Him break promise once. Well, he had to do that for show. But not this time. These soldiers are troublemakers at the fort. Now, he's going to send them through Pinion Pass. They'll arrive about noon tomorrow. But he doesn't want them to find you. Understand? If Greyhawk gets rid of soldiers, him keep horses and rifles. That's the Major's gift. That good. Greyhawk will fix ambush. No soldier leave pass alive. Fine. Eat. Uh, sure, thanks. Me plenty full. Go now. No spend night? No. Hey, Injun. You were speaking English. You a member of this tribe? Him solitary hunter. Him buy food. An Indian buy a meal? Well, I thought they could go out and hunt one up any time. Where'd you come from? Up north. Me Potawatomi. Him rich. Pay good. Silver. A silver bullet. You don't see these very often. Where'd you get this? Maybe you may find it. Maybe you did. And maybe you didn't. I've heard of a man who uses silver bullets like these. Rides a white horse. White horse. Hey, wait a minute. Your name's Tonja or something like that, isn't it? Him Tonto. Tonto, that's it. That hombre I saw riding a white horse. He's your pal, the Lone Ranger. Ever hear of him, Greyhawk? Him dangerous man. I'll say he is. Finding this engine here is proof he's not far away. Where's your pal hanging out? No, you don't, engine. You're staying right here. You know too much. Your pal is bound to come back looking for you. When he does, we'll grab him. Him not walk into trap. Him know about rifles. Maybe him bring soldiers here. Nobody knows about those rifles, Redskin. And the only soldiers coming this way aren't going to arrive. Is that right, Chief? Better tie him up, post guard. You pay? Yes, I'll pay. One rifle for holding Tonto. Can if you get his masked friend. Florigny, stop my dad. Ali. Sorry to get you up so early, Lieutenant. Here's an order from the Major. 
Order. I don't get it, Sergeant. First I'm jailed for failure to perform my duty, then I'm ordered out again to look for renegades, opinion pass. Another wild goose chase. It's a strange world, sir. And orders seldom make sense. Has Sergeant Murphy been informed? He says here he's to go with me. He's ready now. He's waiting with two other men and horses. He has your sidearms. Fine. Oh, Sergeant. Sir? When do you go off duty? In about an hour. I'd like you to do that favor I started to mention last night. Sure, Lieutenant. I guess I can now. I want you to deliver a message to a friend of mine. All right. Where do I find him? He'll be at that cave just west of the fort. Now, you tell him that I've been ordered out on... Uh... Don't shoot, mister. What are you hiding there for? I was waiting. For you, I guess. Lieutenant Haynes told me a man with a mask and maybe an Indian. Where is the lieutenant? Well, he sent me to tell you that he couldn't meet you. Had to go on an early patrol. Early patrol? Where? Major Pollard sent him out looking for Indians again. Out in the Pinion Pass area. How many in the patrol? Four altogether. Only four and going to Pinion Pass. That could be suicide. Suicide? What do you mean? If the Indian renegades in the back hills hear about that, there could be a massacre. Massacre? Hmm. Oh, now who'd spill that news to the Indians? I'm not sure yet. By the way, did you see the storekeeper at the fort this morning? Asa? He wasn't there. And I know, because I was looking for him. The lieutenant wanted me to buy a present for that Indian friend of yours, Tonto, for patching up Johnson's leg. So Jones didn't return. Speaking of Tonto, have you seen him this morning? I saw no one till you came along. I've been waiting here some time. Is he missing? Yes, just like Jones. Tonto didn't return to our camp last night. Say, you don't suppose them renegade redskins have got him, do you? I don't know, Sergeant, but I'm going to find out. You're not just going to ride out and ask them Indians, are you? Yes, that's just what I'm going to do. Thanks for the lieutenant's message. Adios. You like talking before I head back to the fort? Where's your pal's camp? Still won't open up, huh? You want your pal to walk right into a trap. Him not get caught. I sort of think he will. When he does, we're going to have a big party here. Greyhawk's going to see that you and your pal furnish special entertainment. Go quick. They'll make trap for you. I'll get you out first. Avoid knock. Nova. Fine guns. You good catch. Very good catch. Sanko. Greyhawk to ambush soldier patrol near Pinion Pass. Him just now leave. Have the Indians left for the ambush yet? No, pass close by. Then not leave for hour, maybe. Me learn too, Pollard and Jones sell rifles to Greyhawk. Just as I suspected. Now we've got to work fast. Work fast? You walk in the trap. Only because I wanted to, Tonto. Finding you was made too easy. I knew I'd be captured. And how we escape, them take everything. I've come prepared. Take this. Love, plenty of clever hiding place. Hide the knife. You tell him. I told him to bring back his chief. What we do that? We're going to surprise him. Hurry, tell him.
Tuttle, bring over that hide. What'd you do? Cactus spines are sharp. Let me understand. Make surprise. Yes, Tuttle. A good surprise. Them come. Patsu! Patsu! All right, Chief. Get him up. You too. What do you do? First, take off your moccasins. Now call your braves. Tell them to go to Turnabout Canyon and wait for you there. He says to know those sah. Remember, I understand your language. Comprati! Comprati! Tabore! Congo! Oro! Ah! Greyhawk. Over by that window. Turn around. We'll get their horses and tie them in the saddles. You take them to Pinion Pass. Mm, that easy job. May do. When you get there, turn them over to Lieutenant Haynes. Tell him what's happened here and to head for the fort. I'm going there as soon as we get them tied. Orderly, I thought I gave orders. I did not wish to be disturbed. It's me, Major. Asa. Oh. Where were you? I expected you last night. Got the lead. I had to spend the night with the engines. And what's going on here? Plenty. We gotta get out of here fast. This letter just arrived. It must have been delayed in the mail. It says that a special army inspection party is on its way to Fort Maddox. And for me to expect its arrival here on June 24th. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow, Paula? So what? Those rifle shortages will never escape them. Now, take it easy, Major. If the missing rifles are noted, pin the blame on Lieutenant Haynes, Sergeant Murphy, deceased, who sold them to Greyhawk. Before they were, unfortunately, scalped. Oh, yes. Yes. I could do that. That's a good idea, Asa. I've got another good one, too. I learned who that hombre on the white horse was. I baited a trap out of Greyhawk to catch him. Who was he? He's here now. The masked man. Put your hands high. What do you want? How did you get in the fort? With a pass, Major. Right now, I'm asking the questions. <laughs> You, Lieutenant Haynes, friend. Guard, get that man out of here. He's under arrest. Just a minute, Sergeant. There's going to be an arrest, but it isn't mine. You heard me, guard. Arrest that man. Hello, Major. Asa? Haynes, are you here? Another surprise, eh, Major? I see Tyler found you all right. He certainly did, mister. And we have Chief Greyhawk secured in the guardhouse. Him confess everything on way over. Guard, I demand that you obey my orders. Major Pollard, for the time being, I'm giving the orders. On well, whose authority? War Department, Washington. This will explain, Lieutenant. I'm sure it will, friend. You'll find Greyhawk's renegades in Turnabout Canyon. Tonto told me of that, too. Clever plan. Sergeant Murphy rounding up troops now to get them. Good. Just one more thing, Lieutenant. The Indian's gold, which Pollard received for the rifles, must be returned to Black Eagle's tribe. We'll have his quarters searched immediately. I already have. You'll find it in one of his footlockers. Well, I'll see that it's returned. Well, I guess that ties up all the loose ends. Oh, Skip, I'll leave everything in your hands. Come on, Tonto. Adios, gentlemen. Hey, wait a minute. They don't seem to be in any mind to wait, sir. Oh, they sure don't. Say, Lieutenant, what is that masked man's name? I've never seen the likes of him before. Well, I just found out who he is, Sergeant. The Indian Tonto told me. He's the Lone Ranger. Hello, Bill! 